Hold on. It's not recording. Why? Okay, it is now. All right, we're hitting resume. That's funny. You know how spin up drives, sometimes they have to spin up so they're slow? Yeah. Sometimes my SSD drive does that. My external, anyway. That's that's so weird. How can an SSD drive take its I don't instant, know. its I don't know. solid state? All I can think of is it's like an I.O. thing where it says... Oh, you need me? Shit. Hold on. And it powers well, up or something? A, I don't it's know. It's got a right. Oh, yeah, that could be. Yeah, I have no idea. It's weird. All right, here we go, everybody. Here comes the show. It, oh, I haven't dragged over your recommendal. I'll do that while we're working. Oh, you should do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I got everyone else's. Um, all right, here we go. In three, two, one. My salary seems to be getting smaller, and my family's appetite seems to be getting bigger. But luckily, Ponderosa is doing something about it. Because now, Ponderosa has two delicious, complete dinners for just $2.29. This tasty chopped beef dinner, or tender fish filet dinner. With unlimited fresh salad, baked potato, roll and butter, only $2.29 each. How do they do it? Keep making your stupid videos, they'll tell you what to say. The Morning Stream. I must break you. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to TMS. It's The Morning Stream for Wednesday, January 10th, 2024. I'm Scott Johnson. That's Brian Ibbett. Hello, I'm still Brian Ibbett, and I'm still uh, alive, and I'm healthier than ever, 85%. 85%. Look at you. Uh, before we get too far away from it, that opening thing you just played, yeah, the Ponderosa, yeah, uh, two dollars and twenty nine cents. I'm, yeah. I'm, I know it's, I know it's marketing shit, but how do they do it? Yeah, I know that's, how did they like, do it? What, what era? What nineteen twenties BS of a steak dinner with all? Like, oh, big time! And that would have been like I was looking that up because uh, I was curious. It was like eighty four or something, and what? even even then, really? even then, I'm like, wait a minute. You have a complete meal with unlimited salad and bread rolls. Yeah, yeah. For two dollars and twenty nine cents, this is ins- I, this I, sounds I insane. Make sure we're not talking two hundred and twenty nine dollars. Like it's not. We're not. Uh, <laughs> just just to make sure. I'm like, where else could we put the decimal to make this make more sense? Right. But, uh, so even back then, and I know inflation's a thing. We all get it. Don't you know? We're not out of touch. Brian and I yeah, understand this, but yeah. I would. I really, truly, would worry. About a meal yeah. being that cheap, even back then, I would have been. Oh, like, I would question the hell out of that meat. Yeah. I would, I would, I want to see pictures of the cow it came from because. Yeah. That that sounds like rat to me. That sounds like uh, <laughs> two twenty nine as a rat meat price, not yeah. a cow meat price. Yeah, I don't love. I don't love the the, the sound of any of it. And he was stoked. No. That guy was so excited. Well, I, exactly. I mean, it was if I, if I got to be the announcer, they got to tell people they could have a steak dinner for two twenty nine. My God, I I said, please, where do I sign? I'll yeah. do it for free. My guess is so Ponderosa is a. I mean, they were, or maybe they still are. Yeah, a, they're like a bonanza buffet. kind of thing. Yeah, yeah buffet, they're like, a like buffet. you know. Yeah, but I think you still got. Wasn't it? You you got your sides and your salad as a buffet, but they still brought your steak to the table, or was it all buffet? Like even the oh, steak was a buffet. Steak. I don't know because maybe you you kind of like a buffet at a at a regular hotel. You can either do the buffet or just order a a la carte kind of combo yeah. or something. And maybe this was maybe this was that, but. Either way, I don't think I've ever been to a Ponderosa. The closest I ever got was like a Sizzler, I guess. Um, but even Sizzler admits they used to do yeah. deals that screwed them. Like, didn't we have a story recently? It was the all-you-can-eat shrimp thing cost them. Oh, no, no. It was, oh, um, yeah. It was uh, a Red Lobster. Red Lobster, Lobster all-you-can-eat right. shrimp uh, fiasco. Yes. Yeah, and they got hosed on that deal. They did. They really they lost their money. I'm going to be doing that to a uh, Cajun place Friday or Saturday night called Pier Eight locally that says that's Ooh. having an all you can eat. It's a shrimp boil place or a seafood boil place where they boil it in the bag and uh, they so for fifty nine bucks they say well it's all you can eat but we do limit you. I'm like all right well, let's see what the limits are. No more than four clusters of Dungeness crab. Like no more than four. Like I could have four. <laughs> is a cluster a whole? Is that a crab with all its legs? Is that what that is? No, a cluster is one side of the crab. Oh, legs. like so, okay. a crab is is made of two clusters. Okay, that's cool. So you can have basically two crabs, full crabs. Two, uh, I could have two full crabs. Yes. Okay. Exactly. That doesn't feel like and a, then, all and you can scallops eat. Scallops and shrimp and and clams and uh, mussels and stuff like that. I mean, that is. Are all that's the, an insane deal. Yeah, that's an incredible deal. And all the rest of those are unlimited, or do you have? Do you have? Yeah, all the rest those? of those are unlimited. I think. Um, 
Uh, do they, they might limit snow crab. You know what? My yeah. limit of snow crab is, if you've got Dungeness, my limit of snow crab is zero. Yeah. Snow crab is, uh, yeah, it's... it's Snow crabs for losers. It's, That's what we're it's, saying. It's for losers. Exactly. It's for losers. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, anyone who loves their snow crab. Yeah. But yeah. Nobody <laughs> says, my favorite kind of crab is snow crab. Yeah. I mean, you know, even... Uh, Those are the same people that yeah. really like a piece of cod, you know? Like a, like yeah. a nice piece of yeah. car or a carp. I like a fresh caught carp. A fresh carp. Ooh, is there? Could you give me some bottom feeder fish? Yes. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be yeah. wonderful. Thank you so much. Well, good. That's actually yeah. That, we have so place. You know, uh, we we we'll went see with, how I feel on uh, Sunday morning. Uh, <laughs> we went with KT Day to do a place like that, and uh, they didn't do it. We didn't do an all you can eat, but it was like a f- big full package for. It was a, but it was a um, dim sum place, right? Not a. Fish no, this, crab was se- oil this is a separate place. Oh, is place. it a secret yeah. Oil place? Yeah, it's oh, very cool. close to each other, though, funny enough. But uh, it's out kind of where he lives. But they had, or was it him that I went with? Maybe I'm thinking of somebody else. But anyway, it was it was like the corn and the potatoes and the crabs and the, they may have had crawfish and they may, what else? I don't remember. And it was really good and it was about 50 bucks. So I mm-hmm. could go, if I could go back in time to Ponderosa and say, what are you doing? Yes, how are you doing this? By the way, did you realize I did not know this until right now today i learned mm. uh uh ponderosa and bonanza steakhouses were the same company oh i didn't know that yeah and you can still find them at pond bondcom <laughs> <laughs> does that pond mean um pond dom so wait a minute so that okay well that makes sense right they're the same damn thing they don't they do pretty it. much are the same damn thing it's just really funny that you know that they're like well should we do the should we do Ponderosa.com or Bonanza.com? Mm. I know. Let's pick something that no one's ever going to be able to guess, which is Ponbon.com. Yeah. Ponbon. 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 Still plenty of uh, Sorry, it's, locations it's the more we know. Uh, yep. east, of the, uh, east of the Mississippi. That's crazy. That's like Hardee's yeah. and, and uh, Carl's Jr., right? Carl's Jr., yeah, exactly. Same yeah. damn place. Our only Carl's Jr. within driving distance shut down. I don't know what happened there. Maybe some of them oh, really? uh, put sand in their salad like the one I had. <laughs> I don't know. I think there's still one by us, but it's in a gas station. It's like in a, oh. in a come and go. Oh, oh, one of them. Okay. Yeah, exactly. We have a few of those. It's usually like, a, uh, for some reason, Dairy Queens get stuck in gas stations here. Oh, really? Yeah. That's a weird one to get stuck in the gas station. I, I oh. agree. When we go to Vegas, we always stop in Beaver, and Beaver's got one. There's a number of them around here. Um, wow. I don't know why. I don't know what deal they made with the devil there, but get your DQ on. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you're getting gas, or have a, yeah. have a DQ give you gas, I don't know. Which, whichever exactly. way you want. How about a, a tank and a blizzard, please? My brother Matt used to work at a Dairy Queen when I was in high school, and I loved it uh-huh. because he would come home with all this leftover stuff, and none of it was good. It was all cold. It was like a three or four cheeseburgers that were just the ones left when the place closed Ugh. for the night. I loved it though, dude. It's like free fast food in the house. It was yeah. amazing. Yeah, that was so good. I do you right can, now. Uh, you can, you can always reheat those. I don't know if you had a, a access, quick access to a microwave at that point in your life. We but, did, uh, but it was all bready, and you'd have like the ketchup would like cook into that's the true. bread. That's true. You don't want to do bread in the microwave. Yeah, you got to do yeah. a toaster oven. Yeah. yeah. So I'd often eat them cold, but he would also yeah. bring home like blizzards. Those were good. Mm-hmm. It was great. I liked when he worked there. I wish he still did, and then still brought me things, but he doesn't. He yeah. still brings me things. He works at UPS and occasionally will bring me a box. <laughs> he literally brings you things. Yeah. yeah. Once in a while, I get a brown box. Just things you order. Yeah. What can my brother Brown do for me? Uh, hey, I <laughs> thought uh, I thought it'd be, this would be an interesting discussion. And I saw it. So this was yeah. inspired by a very short video that said, hey, did you know that Highlander 2, The Quickening, is in uh, set in this year? This is the year of Highlander 2, 2024. Let's go. Highlander 2. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. And then I thought, well... Yeah. What other movies are set in the year 2024? Yeah. Yeah. And I found quite a list. One of these I wrote twice for some reason. Um, <laughs> then in that case, you can ignore the one I added just underneath it. Oh, yeah. No, very good. Uh, so here's what we've got. Uh, Highlander. see how quickly you'd read through these and maybe read that one. <laughs> read that one again. Uh, Highlander 2, The Quickening happened. Uh, that's uh-huh. a thing. Uh, weathering With You. I don't know what that is. 
I don't a... know the I don't know either. It's some sort of anime thing. I looked it up. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure. A little animated anime deal. Fair enough. We also got Beyond the Time Barrier. Again, that's an old no one. It's idea. like sixties or something. Probably a very shitty time travel movie. I'm probably guess. very bad. Doesn't adhere to any of your time travel rules, if I had to guess. Nope. Nope. I don't even have to look at the premise and I already know that there's mm-hmm. no way it adheres to But now we get into some interesting weeds because you're gonna see a theme here. Uh, yeah. specific yeah. to your to your likes and needs. And I have so when this is over with, I have a big question for you about why. Sure. Sure. You may or may not be able to answer this. I don't know, but I can uh, definitely answer it because I know the question you're gonna ask. Okay, good. Venom, let there be carnage, set in the year twenty twenty four. Although it came out in twenty twenty two? One. Twenty twenty one? Let there be carnage twenty two, I think. I well, think. Two. I think that's right. A couple yeah. years now. Yeah. Uh Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Another Marvel piece of business. Yep. yep. D- direct MCU business there. I guess I guess Correct. that Venom stuff is technically in the MCU, right? It's in it's in the MCU now. Yep. Okay. Uh Godzilla versus Kong. Uh for some reason was set during twenty twenty four. I don't know why. <laughs> Didn't need okay. to be. Could be set anytime. That's really weird to me. Uh Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness and the Forehead One Eye. That came out or uh, sure. what happened during that year. Yep. Uh which is also funny because that movie featured a ton of years all spread out doing different shit different timelines it did but, not it featured different multiverses yeah but aren't they also different or are they all set at the same time is that how that works all set at the same time you're just traveling between multiverses so okay i thought some of that was what the is best. i mean what is time when you're traveling between multiverses right that's true all we know is a guy with a goatee was able to go through them all and do whatever he needed. that's right and then and then charlie's uh, theron showed up and yelled at him yeah for a hot second but you did yeah, yeah. she's a <laughs> furiosa officially in the mcu uh, Eternals, another yeah. another MCU movie. Uh, Black yeah. Widow. You're, uh, it, this one I'd argue with. Like, if we're gonna get, if we're gonna uh, be specific, this one takes place in. It takes place after Civil War, so 2015, 2016. Well, then it jumps forward though, because uh, it goes. It, there, you, your book ended by by um, post End Game. Your book ended by after Black Widow's death, right? But the majority of the film takes place when Black Widow is still alive. and That's true. Yeah. That's true. This one I would also take issue with. Yeah. Uh, here's, here's two that I don't. Far From Home and No Way Home, the two Spider-Mans. Mm-hmm. Those are both mm-hmm. set in the year 2024. Again, mm-hmm. if any of these were individual, I'd just say, well, that seems like no reason. But we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, Underworld Awakening. And Underworld Blood Wars, also Brian put Underworld Red on Air Light, because I almost said this movie twice. Um, <laughs> I was really hoping you'd barrel through this list and uh, and at least start Underworld Red on. So I like tried to disguise it as maybe, oh, maybe it's like an Armageddon kind of weird spelling. Okay, I like yeah. how you did it. R- one word, R-E-D-D-O-N. Red on. Red on. Red on. Air Light. Air Light. Yes. Anyway, those two Underworld movies, the rest of them I don't think have dates but anyway so why all the mcu stuff crammed into 2024 in films that aired in different years here's the here is the the two second explanation all right because uh endgame took place five years after infinity wars but was released one year later oh there you go (laughs) so they had to they had to jump forward five years right so uh, oh so all of the endgame stuff everything post endgame is technically in the future and i'm guessing that with this this nice little year that marvel is taking off (laughs) they can trim that down um, by 12 months we'll kind of be able to yeah we might be able to get things in sync with each other but uh okay but it's not some other big story arc reason other than the big story arc no other other than the fact that they said you know well um we need five years for the blip uh and it's 2019 so i guess everything now takes place in 2024 and so that's why all those things, like basically it was like everything post Endgame uh, had to be just bam, 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 right after one, right after another. That's funny. So so yeah. uh, in a way, though, they also achieved something else, which is the blip feels a little bit like the pandemic kind of, you know, kind what I mean? of. Yeah. Yeah. They, uh, they, which obviously, you know, unintentional because the blip came the blip happened before the pandemic. But but. You Not know, much we, before, though, right? Like 2019. No, like yeah. yeah, a year before the pandemic. But uh, but it's just funny how they write this story. Like, heck, could you imagine if everything just kind of shut down for five years? That's crazy. <laughs> All right, well, <laughs> yeah. enjoy our movie, everybody. Yeah, it's funny timing on their part. Well, yeah. anyway, there you go. Go watch some of those movies. I don't remember Highlander two, The Quickening, much other than I remember it being very bad. Yeah, um, 
Travis Mayfield. Yeah, well, I mean, out. it's the one where uh, Sean Connery somehow comes back That's so dumb. after after dying. Um, uh, being, uh, you know, one of the things that uh, I did during my my recent illness, mm. which uh, which I'm still climbing out of, is uh, binge watch the thing I'm going to be recommending today. But yesterday, because I'd finished the uh, my binge watch, I decided, you know what, um, let's. Let's sit on the couch. I don't mind if I fall asleep. We'll watch back to back X Men Apocalypse and X Men Dark Phoenix. Oh my gosh. Because because those two movies kind of go one right after the other. Right. I mean, obviously chronologically they go one right after another. Right. But it's the it's the first class X Men. It's, you know, Fast Benders Magneto, but it's also um uh Sansa Stark's uh Jean Grey. Yep. Phoenixing out at the end of Armageddon, uh, or Apocalypse Armageddon, at the end of Apocalypse, and then Dark Phoenixing, uh, thanks to Jessica Cheesestain in uh, in Dark Phoenix. <laughs> right. And um, Cheesestain. Oh my God! There. Talk about if nothing else. Yeah. Uh, I'm just gonna say this: Dark Phoenix is probably worse than I remember it. Mm. I, I remember it being really bad, but I, I but it uh, it was worse than I remember it. Um, uh, Apocalypse, I had forgotten about how much damn fan service they have in that thing. Oh, yeah. It's loaded. Yeah, because yeah. it's completely loaded. Like, you get you get a dude who might be the blob kind of in the background of one scene that uh, the angel is fighting. Uh, you've got um, Jubilee hanging out in the background. You've got, uh, I mean, so, so many, like, little little nods and little uh, nudges to things, but did did uh, they um that was was that still what's his name directing Brian Singer Brian yeah. Singer before he left Brian okay Singer. yeah we got in trouble or whatever the hell happened there yeah um I really hope we get news soon on some something more I mean I guess we have Deadpool and the kind of the closing out of all things Hugh Jackman right but right I really want to see what their X Men plans are I'd forgotten that in in uh, um. Apocalypse, uh, you also get freaking Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. I'd completely forgot they they shoehorned uh, Weapon oh. X in there. Oh, I forgot about that entirely. Yeah. What was, part? When, when was it? Was it, it? was it? That wasn't that post credits thing. That was for something else. No, no. It was during the thing. They're trying to escape from Stryker's base. And you get Stryker. You yeah. get, they're trying to escape from Stryker's base. And uh, um, they decide the best thing to do to stop all the uh, Stryker's men from attacking them is uh, open a metal, a really strong metal box that's got some sort of angry creature in it. And uh, <laughs> wow, I forgot all about uh, that. Yeah, that's a good. You know what? I'm looking at that cast. What a squandered, yeah. what a squandered group. You know, it really was. I mean, Ty Sheridan. You know, pretty decent. Scott Summers. Uh, um, I still can't remember her name. Sansa Stark as uh, so- <laughs> Jean Grey. Sophie, Sophie Turner. I think Sophie you Sophie Turner. Yeah, thank you. Oscar. She, she was married to a. Wasn't she married to a One Direction or something? No, one, it's one of the Jonas Brothers. I think oh, the Jonas Brothers. That's what it they, was. They yeah. ended up having a kid, and now they're broke up. So I don't know what's they're, going they're on They're Splitsky, yeah. Yeah. But Jennifer Lawrence um, is always good. Nicholas Holt's always good. Tyler McPhee. What's his uh, Nanny McPhee? What's oh, his name? Cody the, Smith McPhee, that kid. Cody Smith McPhee, yeah. He's a weird looking dude. He is, but he's a perfect nightcrawler. Yeah, he's a good nightcrawler. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. They had all the ingredients. What the hell's going on yeah, over there? Yeah, yeah. And Fastbender. You almost can't go wrong with Fastbender. Like, yeah, prior to those two movies or any of the, I don't know. First Class was good. Days of Future Past, pretty good. It was okay. And at that point, I would have said, yeah, you, you know, Michael Fassbender elevates everything he's in, and it's true, he does elevate all the, the, uh, the, 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 these last two movies are are slightly better because of Fassbender. But I certainly can't say I like everything that Michael Fassbender's in because now I don't. Now you don't. There's something you don't like. Oh, you should see when well, we need to do it for film sack, but the uh, Assassin's Creed movie with him. Terrible. Oh, yeah. Is it really bad? Oh, okay. it's so right. bad. Actually, you know, I say I think I might have seen it. Oh, it's so bad. That's yeah. such a such a potential. It had so much potential and such garbage. Man, that one made me sad. Um, all right. And Jennifer Lawrence, of course. Anyway, so there you go. So uh, X-Men, uh, uh, Apocalypse and Dark Phoenix. Um, yeah. Watch it if you're sick and you don't mind falling asleep and you really kind of 
want to appreciate whatever you watch right after. Yeah. Maybe that's why I liked Echo so much. It was, it was right after those two things. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Artificially boosted your Echo enjoyment. By, yeah, uh, I think so. Exactly. Yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's an interesting idea. If you have something you're not sure about or is new and you really yeah. just want to ensure you have a good time, go watch yeah. one of these bad X-Men movies. Watch one of those, then... too. And, it, uh, you know, if we're saying, if we're, if we're ranking the X-Men movies and we can't count Logan, which I think is by far the best X-Men universe film agreed and and who and who please please show me the person that would disagree with that um i'd say first class i liked better than any of the the, the original three yeah. even two i like first class X-Men a lot two was pretty good yeah. but uh first class i think they they did a great job with. i'd go logan first class second movie that'd be yeah. my top oh three. okay before days of future past yeah yeah wait day, yeah yes days of future okay. past i'd probably give fourth even the rogue cut of Days of Future Past. I don't think I've seen being, it. Have I seen it? I don't think yeah, I have. I don't know if you've seen it. What uh, what changed? You know if you've seen, what what they do? They just they sent uh, Rogue back instead of Kitty Pride. I think was the deal. Oh Maybe. right. This one wasn't on. Uh, I didn't find it on Disney Plus, so I would have watched that. <laughs> They've only got a couple of the X Men movies on Disney Plus, and that's weird that it, that they don't have that one. But um, weird. That's weird. Well, yeah. I uh, I look forward to whatever they do next. You know. Yeah, yeah. Let's hope it's uh, let's hope it's better. Uh, we got a we got a response about this cocaine in the jar thing the kid found at school. And, oh uh, yeah, yeah. Cocaine in the jar. Oh. That's right. Greg from Texas wrote in and says when I was eight because we were talking about an eight year old that found this. Yeah. Uh, when I was eight and I come across a jar of anything on the playground, my first inclination would be to throw the rocks or throw rocks at it or something to bust it open. In the most exciting way possible. See now that I can relate to. I don't. My first instinct is not to t- taste it. My instinct is yeah. to break it or. What's the poke coolest it. way I could break this? Yeah, yeah. There is. You get no argument from me. I think I would do exactly the same thing. Not taste it though, man. No, taste it would be the absolute last thing. I don't want to besmirch an entire family, but you guys raised that kid weird with the eight-year-old yeah. that tasted it. Yeah. Don't be doing that. Gosh, eating cocaine at school? Are you kidding yeah, me? Yeah. Uh, all right, but that that said, he did aces. Uh, he went ahead and took the SATs, and he he did great. Oh, he just rocked yeah, it! Did he got a thirty? Just rocked it! Yeah, that's, that's yeah. fantastic. Was thirty the lining espresso? Is is thirty the top score? I can't remember what it was. SATs. Do you remember? Yeah, I, was, I have no idea. I think it was thirty. I never took the SATs. Oh, no, I went to I went to art college, dude. Yeah. Like, <laughs> they let you in without all that. That's true. I had yeah. so I took it and did really well on it, but my grades sucked. So I had like I had killer test scores across the board, including SAT. But I had loads of D's and F's and shit because I didn't do my homework, and mm. that was just my life in school. Smart, but uh, not. <laughs> it didn't wasn't indicated by any of my grades, and my my grade point <laughs> average terrible. I think the graduating year I may have graduated with like a two point or something. Huh. Because my grades sucked because I didn't do my homework because homework yeah. homework is stupid. It's okay. boring BS. It's yes. not it's just it's no point to it. It doesn't the, help uh, your SA, education. The SAT is like sixteen hundred for the top score, but the ACT is, has like some sort of double digit score. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking of, I guess. Dr. Calhoun. Right? Whatever yeah. the one was, I got like a twenty eight on whatever that was. Oh, or I think I did take well, Sarge, Now that you say that, I think I did take the ACT. Could not tell you what I got in the ACT because I did. I did have to take that one for, for <laughs> to take the ACT for ART. <laughs> well, let's go to the place where they don't ever take tests for anything. <laughs> I am of course Sorry, kidding. South Carolina. Absolutely kidding. We love everybody down there. You guys are awesome. Uh, joining us now is Mr. Brian Dunaway for a little bit of the uh, Tad Pooley feud. How are you, sir? Oh, I'm doing just fine. Oh, hi, Scott and Brian. Just a little, oh, uh, just a little cherry to put on top of that homework thing. I agree. I think homework is stupid. It's an excuse not to have enough tax dollars to cover the amount of education we need to give our kids. Mm-hmm. And it's teaching our kids bad habits, such as taking your work home with you, which you should not do. Mm-hmm. Teachers also have to work from home. Grading these papers is a terrible idea. Put some money into our education and stop with this bullshit homework. Man, I'm done. Wow, Soapbox 
Oh wait! I didn't expect this. <laughs> this they, level of a uh, level of uh, smart answer from you. I don't know why. Here's, here's a genuine question: Like, yes. uh, do Japanese students have homework, or do they do all their work in class? Uh, that's a, that's a great question. I would like to I see wonder. some of the uh, the the top uh, countries for uh, you know yeah, education. education. Now yeah. I do know that the Japanese in the past one of the things that they they have above us is they recognize early specialization uh for education for kids so they tailor those kids and push them into uh more career paths instead of this general education that we right. have that has turned into this political uh positioning to brainwash our kids with whatever your side believes stop doing that let's get yeah. some specialized skills out there like some of these countries that are excelling you know Whatever. what? Yeah. I'm not passionate about education. No, Whatever. not at all. Brian Dunaway <laughs> for PTA president is what I'm. I'm voting that's for. Right. Yes. Yeah, that's great. Uh, no, I. No, agree. That's a really good point. Yeah. Do, good point. So, did anyone Google it? Does Japan? Oh. Uh, have homework. It's a good way to delay things while I wait for people sure. to pipe Shall in. Sure. Wait for, for uh, someone to pay you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. We're looking for hopefully looking for a new player, somebody who hasn't played Tadpoly Feud I prefer, at all before, or or somebody brand like somebody relatively new. Relatively new. If it's been a long time. If if kids want to do something after school, it should be extracurricular activities like band or that kind of thing. It shouldn't be band and then go home and do another two hours worth of homework. That's BS. All right. Yeah. Says we here. Have, if you want to have kids doing something after school. Great. Focus on it. Yeah, focus right. on it. So here's here's what this says. Oh my and God, I, Zoe, you know us. What are you shy about? <laughs> we, you, you, you know, we. Uh... Zoe, you should never be shy. That's stupid. Yeah, not, certainly not with us. My gosh. You're All right. The first person we hug uh, at, at uh, TMS Vegas when we see you. Here's what it says. Uh, do Japanese students get a lot of homework? This is a question that has been asked for decades, and the answer is not always straightforward. In this article, we'll explore the issue of homework in Japan from both a historical and modern perspectives. Then they go on to say... <laughs> Uh, what is homework? Uh, homework is defined right. as blah 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 <laughs> SEO strategy. Yes. Uh, they go they go all the way back to 1603, the Edo period, uh, where they oh, were wow. expected to cle uh, complete their studies at home. They were hardcore uh, about it. Uh, these days, less so. So it looks like they do some homework. Mm. Okay. All right. Uh, right. Here's the conclusion. It is clear that Japanese students do indeed receive more, a bit more homework than their counterparts around the world, but this varies greatly depending on individual circumstances such as grade level and school type. The amount and type of assigned work also depends heavily upon teacher expectation and regional differences between prefectures and cities within the uh, country itself, but overall trends seems to be increasing due to included new technologies such as computers and tablets. So... If, if, if you know, anything, it's a great idea more. teaching your entire people, no matter where you're at in the world, that after you work all day, you should continue to work when you go home. Right. This right. is a terrible exactly. thing to do it is for a our whole thing. world. Right. It's just another right. way to for for here goes here goes conspiracy for yeah. them to control us. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. All right. So what would you say? What would you say if they uh, let's say they extended school one extra hour on average yeah. and you did your, your work, like whatever quote unquote homework you did, you did there at school. At, I'd, at, I'd be down for that. Yes. I think that's yes, the way like to do a, it. Yeah. That's the way to do it. You need to yeah. separate the place you're working. We learn this as we get to be adults when we start trying to, when we finally almost destroy ourselves in the, our twenties and thirties. We discover, Oh, we need to have personal time away from work. Mm -hmm. Most of us learned that. Yeah, yeah. And so, it, but we have to learn it on our own. We yeah. have to wait until we are almost dead. I can also, but I also <laughs> see there is some value. And trust me, I hated homework and I failed a lot of classes because I didn't do it. So this is coming I from me, but I think there is some value in a kid who is now in a home situation. He knows he has a paper due tomorrow and right. he goes in his room. He shuts out all of the distractions and he pulls out pen and pad and he gets the work done. There is something mm -hmm. to that. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah, yeah. But those are, yeah, there's absolutely something to that to be. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, the education, uh -oh. the American the education, education board just shut him down. Oh, shit. Just, that's fine. Oh, up. you're back. Now you're back. Hello. Sorry. That's fine. That's good. That's yeah. good. Is that what you wanted? You wanted them to kick you out? Is that what you wanted? Or the, yeah, the... I, I wanted to be proven right by uh, being cut off. That's perfect. <laughs> that's how you know you're right. That's oh, right. Oh, I must be on to something. That's right. All right. We're going to bring right. in uh, one of our listeners. This is the person with the least 
t- or the most time since we last spoke to them. Yes. Uh, and uh, we'll bring him in right now. Hello, Hootie42. What do you do? Oh, Hootie. What is up, Hootie? What's up, man? Hootie. I'm here. I'm trying to get my audio right. Um, uh, you sound, do this on my phone. Oh, you sound good right now. You sound great, in fact. Yeah, you sound great. Uh, did you not go in today because of the snow, or what's your deal? Did you work? What are you doing? Oh, we lost him. He's fixing his phone. He's ah, been, oh, there he is. He's there back. we go. What did you do to this school board? Did you, <laughs> did you go? Did you go to work? I saw you saying something in Discord. Uh, nope, I missed half the conversation, so I'm just going to stay out of that one. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, well, I hope you're enjoying our local shitty snow. Let's get into it with this game, Brian. But explain it, even though we all know it. Sure. It's time for Scott to log into the Tadpooly feud. Oh. I've surveyed the Tadpooly. <laughs> Nerdy topics, and Scott and Brian now for the answers that they gave us. It's their job to see how many of those answers they can guess. Hootie Forty Two, your job is more important than ever because you're going to be working with either Scott or Brian. And if your team wins, you'll get a prize package that includes such art, genius art, a simulator, happy fun time, go number one. <laughs> I added a few words to the end of that, but such art, genius <laughs> art simulator, and hot brass. Yeah. By the way, such art, genius art simulator oh. currently has overwhelmingly positive reviews. It is a fantastic video game. I own this. Really? I highly yeah, recommend right it. Yeah. It's real. What good. is hot brads? What is that? Hot, hot brass. brass. Oh, oh, hot brass. Okay. <laughs> well, I don't know. Maybe so, yeah. we still don't know the answer to that question, but it is hot yeah. brass. <laughs> uh, all uh, right, that's besides great. Besides Pitt, what's the name? Another hot brad. Uh, yeah, no pressure here, but that game's rad, uh, Hootie. You'll like it. It's cool. real good. No pressure. Yeah, no pressure on winning, though. No, no pressure to play it. Yeah. All right, let's uh, let's get to it here. Put your hands on your buzzards and uh, get ready to answer this. We asked 451 tadpoolers if you could spend a year living on a sci-fi spaceship, which would you choose? Brian. I would get on the Enterprise. Please don't make me go which one. Hmm. Uh, you you grouped me. them together, didn't you? Go ahead. <laughs> I did. Show me the Enterprise. Damn it. I did group them together. All the right. only reason I grouped them together is because there's if, so if many. People didn't, if people didn't put just the Enterprise, they put Enterprise D. And I couldn't just assume that anyone who put who just put the Enterprise was talking about one of the other versions of it. So, yeah, most people said either Enterprise, Next Generation Variety, or Enterprise with Holodex, or Enterprise D, and then a few people just yeah, said Enterprise. Yeah, so. yeah. not not surprising to hear. This is a this is this is what not I expect people bit. want. Yeah. Yep. Uh, turn turn turn. You're ready. Oh, I was about to say, down, yeah, down, what down. was that? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, <laughs> uh, hearing, I'm hearing some Hooty Forty Two uh, background noise. I like can't hear Scott. I only hear Brian and Brian. Oh, you don't hear oh, me? Really? That's, don't hear I bet that's weird. That oh, is that weird. I don't have you muted. Do you have me <laughs> muted? Right-click me. Oh, I guess he can't hear me. He can't hear you. Uh, Right-click Scott. Right-click Scott. See, see, if, see if you've got him muted by chance. Yeah. It's entire, or I guess he's on his phone. But well, Oh, yeah, that's true. Long press or whatever what you do. <laughs> Click with your, tap with your right hand. Not your left, but your right hand. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like he's got me muted. Which might be, which explains uh, right. why he did why he answered my first question so weird. He's he hasn't nope. heard me this whole time. <laughs> he still can't hear me. Okay, so so Hootie, we'll just address you directly when you need to do something, and it's time for you to do something because uh, Brian has control of the board. Enterprise D was the number one answer. So uh, you guys work together. If you could spend a year living on a sci-fi spaceship, which one would you cho- would you choose? Well, and I know there's I, a typo in the. In the oh, I I know which one I would. Uh, pick Hootie. Um, I, I would probably pick one that could, you know, do some pretty good parsec uh, <laughs> going. So, do what, what do you parsec. think? What do you What are you thinking? I'd I'd be down with that one. It's a little grungy oh, yeah, looking. Mo- uh, yeah, yeah, the, a little money and The dirtiness of it is yeah. a little scary compared to you know when you watch the old uh, the solo movie. But uh, yeah, I'll be I'd be down yeah, for it. Yeah, cool. Let's All right. It. Uh, you still haven't said the name of the ship. Do you want to oh, say? Oh, I, I said for... Millennium Falcon. I oh, said did you? Okay, did, I did you just was teasing about it being uh, someone that could do a lot of parsecs? All right, uh, <laughs> let's uh, see the fastest hunk of junk in the galaxy. The Millennium Falcon. Number three answer on the board. Well done. Wow, Number what, three. What beat that? All right. Have you got any guesses now? How about now? Oh. <laughs> I've got one Boy. that I was kind of thinking of. You should hear the stuff that Scott is saying about you right now. Hoodie. Like <laughs> he is taunting you like nobody's business. Oh, uh, maybe I prefer it this way. Um, <laughs> uh, maybe I've got, the Avenue Five. 
Ooh, now oh, that's interesting. Yeah. That could be a high point. Yeah, it's one. not in the greatest situation, but it is kind of right. fancy and nice. It does have like everything, right? It, okay. it is a it is a deluxe uh, deluxe ship. All right, I'm gonna yeah, let's do it. Just Avenue show. Five. Avenue Five. It is. Show me Avenue Five. Oh, no, that's a strike. Uh, number twenty two on the list was the Avenue Five. People oh. did say it, but uh, uh, wasn't wasn't super high on the list. All right, I'm gonna say. Uh, the, 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 the Serenity from Firefly. Oh, that's, Scott is saying yeah. Serenity from mm-hmm. Firefly. Yeah. Uh, we got to relay right, everything see. to Hootie. I love it. Let's do it. I do. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, show me Serenity. Number two. Number two. Serenity now. Okay. Interesting. Mm. Yes. Close game. Four points for uh, Brian and Hootie and two points for Scott. Scott has control of the board. Um, okay. Seven answers left on the board. It's uh, you know what I love. Eight, I, you, know what, nine, you know what I love? 45 in the AM mountain time. That's right. That's right. What, what do you love? You know Delaware? what I love? I, I love those, uh, those uh, charts that like do the different sizes of the ships. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Those are always fun. Those I'll just kind of awesome. like peruse those occasionally, just going, oh, look at that one. Yeah, oh, I my love God. That, stuff. that one's huge. Um, Let's go with. Um... Oh, gosh. Um. I had one in my head. I know. I it's hard to it. think because there's a lot yeah. of small ones I can think of. There's sure. a big one I can think of because you don't want to spend a, a year on a small one, do you? I guess you could. No. Yeah. Um, okay. No I'll say. spend a year in a TIE fighter. Are these? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And this can be TV or movie, right? There's no distinction. Right. Yeah. Okay. Even uh, could be books if you want. Oh, books. Oh, how about real ships? Um, uh, sure. I guess it could, but that seems dangerous. Spend, uh, spend a year with Bezos in the uh, giant blue <laughs> penis. Sure. All right. Um, oh, let's... I just thought of another good one. I hope Scott doesn't think of it before I say well, it. Well, he'll never know. Um, <laughs> Something better than the Avenue 5. Let's say... Let's do <laughs> the... Sci-Fi has the best title right now. In space, Hootie can't hear Scott. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Scream or anything. Fantastic. All, All right. right so I'm, go ahead, Scott. I'm going to do the... The the oh, I forgot the name of the damn thing the the expanse ship um that the team stole from the Martians it's called the expanse ship the, is good enough I think that, that's the Esposito no I don't know what it is but it's called it's the ship shit yeah it's the expanse ship that's what sure, I'm saying sure I'll, I'll let I'll let you work with that uh, right. you're looking for the Rossinante Rossinante uh, thank you yes. Oh, Really, not a lot of amenities on that thing, but they do have a a kitchen with a bunch of plants uh, yeah. in the walls. Yeah. yeah, and coffee makers. Show me the Rocinante. Ah, Number six. Oh, no, look at you, Scott. People, other people the do want to stay on the Rocinante. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Um, Scott takes the lead. By the way, look at that. Wow. All right. Uh, let's do um, the f- the what's the no nope. flotsam that one. flotsam paradise thing from. You know, the big cruise sure. ship on... Uh, Flaston Paradise. That's the one. That's, that's the one. Sure. From the fifth element. All right. Yeah. Uh, another one nice that's one. got everything. Uh, uh, in, yeah, including uh, uh, Screaming Ruby Rod. Yeah. All right. Show me Flaston Paradise. Oh, oh. No. oh, I love that answer. And that would have been my choice. Number 13 on the list is where that one ended up. You know what I like most about the ship is they have these the little beds where they put you to sleep so you don't have to experience the long travel. I love that. Right. Well, that's and that's that was the ship that you take to get to Floston Paradise is the uh, the little. Oh, well, that's ship. right. That was their little yeah. uh, cruiser yeah. transporter things. Yeah, I, and, I want that. If you're in- lucky. If you're lucky, Ruby Rod will slip into your little capsule, too. <laughs> I want all of those. I want that for I every don't kind of travel. I like how you said that. I want travel to every travel I do. I want that to be a thing. I want to be able to just knock myself out. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Oh, I'd love that. Anyway. Now, all right. All right. Hootie, I, I have one this in the title of the TV show. Um, and I wouldn't mind. I don't know. Would I want to stay on the Battlestar Galactica? I don't, it seems like a bad bet, but I, I, I kind of always love the ship. I'm seeing people say it a few times in the chat i also have another one in mind okay whichever yeah i'll give it the hootie oh. choice <laughs> my other thought was the tardis hmm. oh that is yeah it's a time ship but i guess it's a spaceship too right yeah, so it flies yeah. through space i'm in space yeah yeah, yeah. it's space time yes yes is uh space yeah 
time and relative dimension in space goes wherever uh-huh. it wants. Right. Uh-huh. That's yep. right. Which one do you want to go with? I'm going to let Hootie pick. Oh, like Sophie's, Sophie's choice, if Sophie were named Hootie. <laughs> uh, oh, TARDIS. All right. Okay. <laughs> Went with his heart. Went with yeah. his heart. Yep. All right. Show me. It's bigger on the inside. The TARDIS. Oh, wow. Number four. Pretty good. I didn't expect it to be that high. That's great. Yeah, I didn't even think of the TARDIS because I don't think of it as, I guess, yeah. It makes sense. I think that's you what know, I answered when yeah, I did not a lot of amenities, yeah. but but in, in something like the TARDIS, you can go to where there are whatever amenities you want. You can travel right. to the places with the amenities. Plus, it's got now, that Harry. Wanna... It's got that Harry Potter thing where you walk into it and it's huge, as opposed to looking right, exactly. all small. Yeah, I like that. I, yeah. I used to always want to be Hootie, uh, um, since Battlestar Galactica doesn't seem to be uh, tickling your fancy. The the Heart of Gold ship, the one uh, in Hitchhikers. Is, I used to really would like to ride in something like that, but now I like something with a little character. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. that was my that was my other thought was the Heart of Gold. So it was, if if not that, then the Battlestar Galactica, either mm, maybe Battlestar Galactica because I see it's it coming up in the chat. Be, yeah, that I well, lots of times these just end up being uh, you know I gotta think of a, a spaceship. Quick, what's one? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Answer. Heart of gold, mm-hmm. do it. Do it. So which one are you doing? What are you doing? Scott wants you to go to Heart of Gold. You can't <laughs> hear it, but he does. <laughs> it's a trap. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say Ooh, I'm gonna that's say a good Metal one. Star Galactica on that. Okay. All right. What do you ooh. Uh, Galactica? Yeah. Okay, do it. yeah. Go. Hold on, Brian. Brian, give an ooh. Did you? Is there something? Well, else? whenever I said it's a trap, I started remembering another ship, and I'm thinking maybe I want that one. But go ahead, Hootie. You're okay. not doing right. the Fishman ship. We don't even know the name yeah, of that. Battlestar thing. Galactica. Yeah, we do. We All just right. got through playing the darn games, God. Yeah, we play retro. Yeah, we we talked about the ship did. like a hundred times. We did, but I don't know, man. Well, okay, whatever. Man. You know what? Yeah, actually, Scott's, you know what? Arguing with me right now, Hootie. I know you can't yeah, hear you it. Can't hear it. Yeah, yeah. You should He's do not it. making good points. Uh, <laughs> all right. You're Somehow, the... like the uh, adventure club, but I can't unmute him. It's not letting me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened. I have no idea. I, really Discord. I blame all Discord. Right, going with uh, the, the Battlestar Galactica. Is that, uh, that the final choice, final answer? I think that's the safest. All right. Show me Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> Number oh, 11, just out of the top uh, 10. Yeah. Okay, well, that makes me want to maybe try Heart of Gold. So I'm going to say Heart of Gold. I'm going to say Heart of Gold? He's, saying, he's right. still on our answer. Heart yeah, of Gold. Oh, look at that. It's a tie game right now. Eight to eight. Ooh, Ooh. doesn't happen too often. Uh, all right, show me the Heart of Gold with the infinite probability drive. Yeah. Number five. Oh, daggummit. Mm. He got it. Yeah. He got the Heart of Gold. Yeah, he did. Um, all right. We can hear me, Brian. Yeah, he can hear. <laughs> I can't hear you anymore because I just muted you. So. Um, this, is, this is kind of fun. Like, just randomly uh, you know, make somebody mute yeah. and just see what, you know. Mute, yeah. mute roulette. roulette. Yeah. That's right, exactly. It, it, would, yeah. it wouldn't be me if there wasn't some audio issue, right? Right. You're right. <laughs> All right. All right. Four answers left on the board. Seven. All the big numbers, right? Seven, eight, nine, ten. What do we got? Well, okay. So the Rocinante makes me think that there are ships that people just think are cool. And it doesn't matter if they really want to live on one. So I'm going to say the Nostromo. Nost- Nostromo from uh, Nostromo. Alien. Nostromo. That's yeah. a good one. Yeah, let's okay. do that. Having mother. See, that's another one where you just sleep, really. Like going someplace? Ah, sleep. Yeah. Let me know. Wake me up when we get there. Cool. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's do it. Show me the Nostromo. Nostromo. No Stromo. No Stromo. Oh! <laughs> Damn it. Uh, yeah, no, nobody. Uh, let's see. Nostromo uh, didn't didn't come up. Somebody somebody put really? Alien, the only one I could think of. Is, is, uh, that, that is hilarious. So I'm thinking that they meant Alien. Uh, they meant the Nostromo and not uh, the big uh, Geiger uh, organic looking ship with a dried out. Oh the yeah, side. the guy with the gunner with a thing hooked to his crotch or whatever was going on there. That was weird. <laughs> I love that stuff. Always been fascinated with organic ships like Lex and that yeah. kind of stuff. And that one from yeah. Farscape. Wasn't that an organic ship as well? 
Well, I just like Lex because of the pretty blue-haired lady that lived on on Lex. Well, duh. <laughs> I mean, yeah. There, I mean, hubba, yeah. Hubba. somebody suggest. I've seen a couple suggestions of the Botany Bay. I don't want to be on. <laughs> 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 Botany Bay. Botany Bay. What's the Bay. What's the name of that oh, ship? No. What's the name of that ship that uh, Kylo Ren was in in what was it sixty nine? No, what was the name of the movie that we just watched? A million? What was nice. it? Sixty five. Sixty five. Sixty five. That was a nice uh, sleep ship until he wrecked it. No, the I've sequel. Seen a bunch of other good suggestions around another British sci fi show. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. What we got? The Red Dwarf. Oh yeah, the dw- Red Dwarf. That's great. That's a good one. Yeah. All right. Okay. That's your that what you're saying? Are you saying that? Uh, if we don't get it, we're going to lose, though, because Scott's ahead of us. Yeah. So final strike. Any other suggestions, Brian? That's the best one, I think. The Red Dwarf. The, I can't think of any, any more good ones. So everything else is just going to uh, be a guess. So I think I think anything that either you see in the chat or what you just said, Red Dwarf, is a, is Red, a good guess. Red Dwarf and Deep Space Nine. Uh, uh, yeah. Who wants, to know who wants to be on D Space? It's not Nobody a ship, anyway. <laughs> it's not a ship. It's a space uh, station. Red Dwarf. I go Red Dwarf. Converted it to a, they, they converted it to a, a ship because they had to get closer to the black hole. Yeah, they, they had that one that's weird true. ass episode, but that's not yeah. that doesn't count. It was briefly mobile. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, they built it out there, right? They didn't fly it out there, so it has to be a space station, not a ship. Exactly. Uh, Red Dwarf, going with Red Dwarf? Red Dwarf, Red Dwarf, look, give him a Red, Red Dwarf. Dwarf. Three Dwarfs, three Red Dwarfs. Dwarfs. Okay, Red Dwarf. Red Dwarf. Show me the show with one of the greatest theme songs of all time. Red Dwarf. Number there 10 it hands is. are on the board. There Shit. it is. Got it. Shit. Now we got you. ourselves a game. Look at yeah. this. Shit. 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 Uh, three answers left on the board. All right, you guys. Everybody's sitting on two strikes. Uh, I'm down with that. Brian uh, and Hootie have the ball. Yeah. What was that stupid ship that we made um, for, uh, it, was it, uh, yeah, Atlantis. Remember that stupid, big-ass, stupid ship they had at the end of SG-1? What's the name of that thing? Oh, yeah. Well, the, yeah the, the, uh, the Atlantis show? Oh, yeah. That what was, was the name of that? That was called the, I'll even tell you because uh, I'd like Hootie to win. That was I'm just called... Saying how much of that's going to, how many people in the tadpole are going to say that? That's the uh, Daedalus. Nobody. That's the Daedalus, yeah. by the way. Daedalus. What's the name of the show? Bell. I don't think it's on there if you're asking me. There's no way. The ship from Alien. Already, God, yeah. Already did it. The, think, yeah, already did that one. Yeah. It's like, eh. Stromo. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. This must be what it's like to have people. <laughs> That's right. You can't you can't call an air, red on air light when. Uh, uh, yeah, when you can't hear Scott exactly. saying it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Discord on my phone is not letting me unmute Scott. <laughs> That's, That's right. Weird. By the way, uh, Scott did guess Nostromo, and That's how he got his second strike. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. I'm, I'm trying to think of anything that we might have missed. What's the stupid? Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, oh! What's the um? Oh, what's the name of the stupid? Sh- oh, why can't I think of the Guardians of the Galaxy stupid ship? Mm. Uh, you could oh, just say it's, you could just say it's the garden gardens gardenies Gar- <laughs> gardenies <laughs> the gardenies. I'm going with the gardenies of the galaxy. <laughs> The guardianship is what I meant to uh, say. Yeah, I could, I could go with the, the Milano. lights up like a Jackson okay. Pollock painting with a black yeah. light. Sure. That's a good one. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's go with the ship that was, uh, I mean, we all know is named after the Pepperidge Farm cookie. The Milano. <laughs> oh, oh, that's too bad. Uh, the Milano is, uh, was on the list. Where is it? Number 20 on the list. Nice. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, all right. I'm going to try for Orville. The Orville. Oh, Ooh. that's a good one. Well, right. that might be actually that might be really good. He might get us here. Ooh, that's scary. All right, yeah. show me the Orville. Number oh, nine. Scott, Scott killed us. Oh. The oh. only oh. way to win it. now is if Scott runs the board and he's got one strike. He cannot make any mistakes. Okay. Didn't totally think about the Orville. Ugh. Dude, Scott, I got to get redeemed for my terrible performance with the crayon colors. Uh, no, that's right. <laughs> oh, that's what it was. Oh my god, that was a long time ago. Um, Holy cow. Uh, s- s- slave one. I know that sounds oh, weird, but it's no, a cool that's a, that's ship. That's a good guess. Yeah. 
I mean, no. he stays on it for a long time. Why not? I'm saying Slave right. One. Scott is saying Slave One. How do you feel about that answer, uh, Hootie? They renamed it, didn't they? Oh, yeah. they would. They, I can imagine that doesn't hold up well. Yeah. Right. Well, mm-hmm. they changed it because it's they didn't like the name Slave in there or something, right? Slave One's not bad. Yeah, that's, that's what I mean, holding up. <laughs> I thought he named it after Leia. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> the Slave Leia One. Slave Leia. <laughs> <laughs> the Leia one. <laughs> the Leia one. All right. You going with Slave One? Yeah, let's do it. Again, All right. Show me Slave One. Oh, oh that's the game, man. Oh, oh man. man. Yeah. He was muted. I'm going to have to go back and re-listen to this to see just how dumb I sound. <laughs> not being able to you know what? You didn't sound dumb at all. You did a, you did a great job. Uh, so uh, so what were these? Just call it the Boba Fett ship, really? Is that what they call it now? Jeez, that's, that's lame. dumb. Anyway, yeah. but I thought so, they called it a Boba Fett vet. No, all right. Uh, so what's who'd we miss here? Yeah, what let's is, look at number seven. So a lot of people in the chat room were saying this. No, Battlestar Galactica. You guys guessed, and it was uh, number eleven. Oh. You already got that one wrong. Oh, you right. want to get wrong again? I can't uh, hear you. You're muted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, show me number seven. The Axiom from Wall E. Uh, that's a okay. ship that's got everything and uh, makes you fat. Yeah, that's wow. good. That's a good one. All and right. finally, I think you guys like once you got the Enterprise D, you stayed out of the whole uh, Star Wars, Star, 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 Wars, Star Trek Star universe. Trek. <laughs> <laughs> we'll pretend I didn't hear that. The whole Star Trek universe. You're muted. <laughs> uh, the Voyager number oh, eight. Oh God, the Voyager! Oh. Why didn't I think of Voyager? Gosh dang it! Yeah. Uh, yeah, some other ones rounding out the uh, the top uh, the top choices here. Deep Space Nine was number twelve. People don't care that it's not a ship. Yeah. Uh, the Cerritos from Lower Decks. The Death Star. There's a ship that's got everything. Um, <laughs> as, long as, you av- as long as you avoid Darth Vader, I mean, it's not a bad ship, yeah. right? It's all right. right. Planet Express. People want to go uh, deliver uh, stuff mm. with Fry. Uh, Home One, which is the Calamari Cruiser. I told you, Scott. It's a trap. Yeah, it's not near uh, ten. Moya. Uh, Avalon. People actually really want to live on Avalon, which is the uh, ship from the movie Passengers, where Chris Pratt uh, wakes up Jennifer Lawrence and, and, and in essence kills her. You know, basically. Jennifer Lawrence isn't going to be on there, people. You, that's not how it right, works. Right. right. It's not how it works. No. Uh, Farscape ship. People wrote, which is what the Normandy, right? Uh, mm-hmm. or no, no. Normandy is from Mass Effect. Mass Effect Normandy. Uh, yeah. No. Uh, Normandy, by the way, also getting some. The Benatar, the replacement to the Milano. Uh, Alpha from Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets. One person said that, which is the one person who saw that movie. Uh, I like that movie. I'm I love with that him. movie. Yeah. yeah, it was a fun movie. Yeah. Uh, Babylon 5, uh, The Battle School from Ender's Game, Destiny from Scargate, uh, Executor, The Foundation, Halo... One person said Lex. Halo. Yeah. It's Halo. probably me. They just said Halo. Just Halo. Uh, okay. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. One the actual... that doesn't get blasted and half the crew dies. That's a great answer. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's see. Tent of Four. Uh, yeah, that's Leia's ship at the beginning of the, New Hope. The, the, mm-hmm. Cor- the Corellian Corvette or whatever it's called. The, uh, yeah. uh, the Behemoth from The Expanse. Behemoth. Yeah, the behemoth, yep. the behemoth. Can't remember that one. The uh, the one from Sunshine and the one from Lost in Space. We'll 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 cut it off there because I don't want any ships that crashed. I don't want Sunshine and I don't want the right. Lost in Space ship. Yeah, mm-hmm. but Sunshine oh, one saved person us. said the Winnebago from Spaceballs. There oh. we go. That's a oh, good that one. That's great. a great one to end on. Yeah. I had that thought earlier, but I was like, eh, I don't think that's going to be in the top ten. That's pretty good. Yeah. Now, what Ho- what Hootie cool. cannot hear me say is that you've won uh, or you've lost. So you've he's won. Gonna, you've so he's lost. Hear this. So Scott, uh, he's playing yeah. the horrible sound for you. Yeah. Now. And now, and now he can't hear anything because I literally <laughs> kicked him out of the thing. Uh, hey Dunaway, uh, hey Dunaway, uh, rhymes with Faye Dunaway. Look, you're 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 only here Monday and Tuesday or Wednesdays, but on Friday you and I record a show at 1:30 p.m. called Play Retro, and this week is going to be awesome because we're going to talk about a very very old Bethesda game. It turns out is one of the biggest games ever made in terms of actual space you can explore. Uh, yes, and I can't wait to to talk about it. How'd and I your... got lost so many times this past week doing just that, trying to explore and not understanding anything. In Daggerfall, Daggerfall recently uh, released the one O version of the Unity conversion, um, and it's been pretty cool. I've enjoyed myself. Never played it first time. 
Yeah. Hmm. I played it back in the day. Loved it then. Uh, it's a little wonky now, but I still think it deserves some some credit. And it's also the, it's also kind of the time you can pinpoint when Bethesda was about to explode and become huge. Uh, so come with us on Friday and talk about The Elder Scrolls II Daggerfall with me and Brian Dunaway at uh, Play Retro over at frogpants.com slash play, 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 slash play retro. Hey, Dunaway, kiss our butts. I, I know. <laughs> Damn, dude. That weird mute uh, thing threw me. It threw me off. It really did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's go it, to take a break. To the land of Gardenies of the Galaxy. Which, In uh... Gardenies. <laughs> that was so stupid. Um, we're going to go take a break. We're going to come back and talk to Tom Merritt, who was on the ground in Las Vegas at CES. We're going to see what he's yeah. seen. Yeah. Holy cow. A bunch of cool stuff there. I, can't, I don't know what he's going to want to talk about because there's a, a lot of cool things I've been hearing about. Yeah. I want to hear about this foldable LG OLED uh, transparent TV Ooh. thing. I, I must Ooh. know more. That's cool. Anyway, that's all uh, coming up after this song from you. What do you have? Sure. Well, if you're a fan of bands like Obits, The Cops, and Holy F, uh, they really, they totally spell it out. Uh, members of those bands have formed a new band called Savak, S-A-V-A-K, and they have a brand new album called Flavors of Paradise that comes out March 1st on Ernest Jennings Rec- uh, Recording Company. This is their first single from the album. It's called Leash Biter. Here is the band Savak. Experiments have shown that we need at least 36 inches and that 42 inches is a more desirable length for the mixing counter. Right now we've got about four different types of computers. And we're back. Hey, Brian, tell me that artist again and that song. Sure. That is the song called Leash Biter. I said it really fast, so somebody thought I said Leash Spider. Leash Biter by the band Savick from their upcoming album, which I said was called uh, Flavors of Paradise. And I stand by it. It's still called Flavors of Paradise. Mm, The Flavors of Paradise. That's Mm. right. Engulf yourself in the Flavors of Paradise. Don't quite know what to make of those, but here's this. We want 229. What a deal. Uh, Hey, look who it is. It's Tom Merritt in the land of cheap buffets, or at least it used to be the land of cheap buffets. That's right, yeah. Uh, Is it still? I don't think it is anymore. Well, it is if you go to some place you don't want to go to eat. I think the I think the uh, Excalibur uh, Knights Buffet is probably still pretty cheap, but yeah. don't eat it there. Yeah, mm. I wouldn't do that. Yeah. Um, no, yeah. But you, uh, you're there for CES, which is always, always very exciting. In fact, I think you weren't there last year, so this is a big, exciting new uh, new day for everybody. We oh, to- yeah. I, I was last at CES in 2020, January 2020. Yeah. One of the uh, one of the last things I did. Wow! Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Was... Um, I and it was back in person last year, but I didn't go. Rich Trofolino and Amos went, uh, but it's just me this year, mm-hmm. uh, walking the halls, snooping on the gadgets, and 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 doing walkthroughs. Uh, if you haven't checked out YouTube.com/slash Daily Tech News Show, I've been going to these evening press events, and I just walk through, mm. slowly walk through. It takes like 15, 20 minutes. And it, you get a sense of like, here's what's happening in these events. Here are all the vendors. You get little snippets of conversations and stuff. So if that sounds uh, cool, uh, go check that out. It's it's been one of the more fun things for me to do because it gives me a great overview of what's in each of these events. Oh yeah, look at you walking here. Oh man, this this uh, boy, this brings back memories. You're in a you're in a place at the moment in your latest video where I'm pretty sure this is where the Star Trek convention was last time. Oh, at the yeah, the Las Vegas Convention Center, right? I think so. Or let's see, maybe this is no, Bellagio. No, oh, at the it, Rio. It, it was at the Rio. Sorry, not the, all the ballrooms yeah. look alike. Uh, which, which one is it? Showstoppers? Uh, Showstoppers. That's the one. Where is yeah, that? Yeah, that was at the Bellagio. Bellagio. Okay, it didn't remind me okay. of that. Uh, it's uh, wow. These are bringing back memories. Uh, have you seen anything where you were like, whoa, the world yeah. is yeah, about to change? Question, right? Yeah. 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 You know. Um. I don't think so. Uh, I've got a couple of things that I think are pretty interesting. Um, obviously, the big trend is AI and everything, yeah. which is kind of like saying everything has software. <laughs> <laughs> right, like, right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 not that it has AI. What are you doing with it uh, that makes right. it interesting? Uh, one thing that's caught a lot of people's eye, including myself, is the Rabbit R1. Mm. Uh, from uh, what? What are these guys? Uh, teenage mutant ninja remember. turtles. Teenage engineering. <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> okay. teenage engineering made the rabbit. It looks kind of like a play date. 
It's not a phone. It's just mm-hmm. Wi-Fi uh, with it. It's it's not meant to make calls or anything, but it has its own uh, algorithms. They call it a large action model instead of a large language model. A little bit of marketing spin, but mm-hmm. I think it's cool what they tried to do here, which is train it to use apps. Mm. So uh, Spotify, you know, uh, Uber, et cetera, uh, it can it can use them. It didn't train them to use Uber. It didn't train them to use Spotify. It trained them how to use apps. So it knows what a settings looks like, how to look for confirmations. Uh, theoretically, you could throw any app at it and it would be able to, to operate it. The idea being you can just say, hey, book me an Uber to take me from the Renaissance to the Bellagio. Uh, and it would be able to do that. So almost like just uh, uh, taking the place of a Siri kind of thing, or you know, some oh, some yeah, sort yeah. of personal Siri, assistant. Amazon, yeah. Google, but yeah, it's yeah, it's uh, it's meant for you to just be able to talk to it, tell it what you want, and it'll go find the apps and websites it needs to do it. Yeah, there's a real simplicity to it, which I think I like, and uh, it's hard for me to tell how big this is because I never see anyone's hands with it. They're only showing like renders and a commercial, and there's some shots yeah, of the event. Yeah, put a, put a chocolate bar next to it or something so we can yeah <laughs> so i can't tell how big this thing is but there is a camera in there and i see a like some yeah. kind of scroll wheel knob yeah because there's there is an it's a touchscreen interface uh and they have category cards to kind of give you information uh sometimes just because it's easier to read like the weather or something that it can you know hear it read out but also uh, to make sure you're like oh yeah it's doing what i asked it to do so is it is the is the uh, the thought behind this that you would just install those apps on this device or would it somehow do those things for you on your phone? Because I know yeah. obviously if Uber it would have to do it on your phone. You don't want to take two devices with you. Right. It, you you would do it on this device. You would have okay. Interesting. Uh, okay. You would have Uber installed on this. On the device it, itself. It's the Rabbit OS. So then you've got I- to take two devices when you travel Yeah. To- and see and that's my big that, that's my so- big question is like everybody's got a phone this device i understand the 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 ai part of it is interesting i mean right this oh, i think way, it's about half the size of an iphone so it's tiny okay oh, so okay. it's pretty small right. so i understand the ai advantages or potentially what they are but all this is going to come to your phones at some point mm-hmm. right so why would i buy this thing I- i feel like this is a way for them to show that their stuff works okay um, yeah because then eventually, right? The, the, so one of the big phone manufacturers will say, "Well, let's let's buy these guys and put that as the new personal assistant on our phone, or improve our pers- or existing personal assistant with their mm-hmm. their software." Yeah. Yeah. It's so either Rabbit OS starts to become a, a, a an OS that phone makers put on their phones, or they license some of their large action model to to other other folks. But yeah, it's uh, I don't, I I think it's pretty interesting it is, that does um, sound cool yeah and it's yeah it's one of those things where it kind of reminds me of the sling box if you remember the old sling box oh, yeah where, where yeah. you could stream your television uh to your to your phone or to your in fact when it began i don't even think it was to phones i think it was just to to laptops and right. and that that was like well why would i need this sort of thing and eventually it became really <laughs> really useful and then uh, eventually it was less useful because we got streaming and all that but right. um yeah i think this is uh i think this is one of those out of the way interesting uh ideas that maybe isn't obviously something you want right now um but worth keeping an eye on and at 199 dollars it you know i think more people might take a flyer on trying it out yeah Yeah, that's actually that's a decent price point for 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 the gamble for sure yeah i'm very curious about it and not making the hardware like you know super expensive so i think that that helps yeah I have some curiosity. I wish there were more colors, though. I don't think I like this orange red thing. <laughs> I don't know. You know, it's the kind of device that you want it to like, kind of look cool in your pocket. I'd like a yellow one or like yeah. a black one or something. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, anyway. The other one I found is the Vision Zero One, but spelled with an X. V I X I O N Zero One glasses. Excision. Which, but they're not smart glasses. In, in the sense of like, they're not trying to put augmented reality in front of you or anything like that. Uh, they use time of flight sensors, you know, the kinds of things you have in, in VR and stuff to uh, measure distance to uh, objects and focus them. So they, oh. can, they can sense what your eyes are doing 
and kind of try to uh, you know optimize what looks good. And as soon as you say, oh yeah, that looks clear, then it zeroes in and makes everything in focus for you. Oh wow! See, I'm looking at this this uh, um, the site right now. This would be great, like doing miniatures or something, right? Where you usually have to wear like you yeah know, glasses, where you've got is uh, have like a little magnifying lens on them this would be perfect for that because you could just focus in on what you're painting and have it go right up, right up close yeah to and that, that that's Talk. a good point is they're not they're not marketing this as a replacement for glasses they're like we don't think you should drive with these things on uh you know <laughs> focus on that car no no focus on that other car no, probably focus not on that one. jogging yeah. or anything but but yeah if you're doing something you know focused and you you want uh, a little uh a little a little bump to your vision i think making miniatures is a great example of that kind of thing yeah. it's got a 10 hour battery life too so well, that's, not that's really cool when i first went to the website i thought oh i must be on the wrong website because this looks like a fashion site mm. but they are uh, nice looking. Yeah. I'll they're really it. nice looking. They're very yeah. dirty La Forge, but 2024. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Little Utah Connection says it's based on a prototype that came out of the University of Utah back in 2017. Hey, yeah. There you go. Oh, That's cool. cool. Uh, these are available for pre order in Japan right now 99,000 yen. Uh, that's close to 700 bucks. Oof. So they're not cheap. Uh, no. shipping in February. And we don't know. We didn't get an idea of when they're coming outside of Japan anywhere else. Okay. Well, that's cool. See, there's there's nifty little bits and bobs out there. That's sure. kind of my feeling uh, at this CES is there's some big announcements. Don't get me wrong. Transparent televisions all over the place. Samsung and LG had them. Uh, there's you know Sony showed off their Afila car and rolled it out onto the uh, show floor and all that. But uh, overall, robots up the wazoo. Lots yeah, of and Intel, AMD, NVIDIA, they all had chip announcements. They're, they're always secondary chip announcements, follow-ups, you know, uh, more affordable options and stuff like that. And I'm not, not putting that down. It's not, it's cool, but it doesn't feel like, oh, it's dominated by this. It's, there's a lot of little interesting mm -hmm. things. And, and mm -hmm. that sort of makes sense to me as we're, we're kind of moving into a new world with large language models that you'd see a lot of little attempts right now mm -hmm. to figure out what it's, what it's good yeah that does make sense yeah. so on the transparent tv front real quick yeah, yeah has anyone tried to explain there why you would want it other than i know they make really pretty show pieces like if you had a tv got that is got yeah it's transparent yeah but why <laughs> to what why, end to what end it. to what I, end yeah I, they're, they're I paid a lot of money to paint these walls, by golly, and I want to... <laughs> yeah. It looks cool. You, you get kind of a, a, a holographic sort of feel from things. Things seem to be floating in the air. Um, it does feel like it's more for um, putting up cool decor than it is yeah. uh, for for any kind of home entertainment use. Mm. Um, but yeah. maybe that's yet to be discovered too. What what the the content for transparent TVs is uh, has has yet to be created. Mm -hmm. uh, I know LG had one uh, prototype where it had a, a contrast screen that would roll up behind it, so that you could have oh. it be transparent when you want it, or you could have it just work like a regular television. Well, that sounds very inexpensive. Not going to cost much at all. <laughs> that's right. Only probably ninety to a hundred thousand. I'm sure that's all. It'll be fine. Ooh, you could put another worry. TV behind it and watch two things at once. <laughs> oh my go. gosh. Oh yeah, it could be like an oh, like an like augmented reality yeah. for your television. Yeah. Instead yeah. of picture in picture, it's picture yeah, on yeah, picture. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go to Costco, spend fifteen hundred on one of those, yeah. stick it behind it. You're right. all done. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, well, excellent. I can't wait to hear more about what you've seen and what you're doing out there. And I know that a lot of that is, you know, happening on the show, DTNS, which is happening today. Tom will be there from the floor. Uh, anything else you want to say about any of that or anything you want? What do you want to say, Tom? You say it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, we had Molly Wood on the show yesterday. So if you, you haven't checked that out, we, we talked about a new battery advancement that Microsoft was a part of that could reduce the amount of lithium in batteries, which would be a huge mm. deal on its own. But it's also an example of how machine learning and deep learning can accelerate development. They developed this battery, which should have taken at least two years to come up with the, the design. And they did the entire thing from conception to prototype in nine months. Oh uh, so that's pretty significant. We talked about that. We also talked about the the big uh, EVTOL aircraft uh, from Hyundai's uh, Supernal. 
uh, that's coming in a couple of years. Molly got to see it uh, in person. And then today on the show, Trish Hershberger is joining us. Uh, so we're going to talk about some some cool motherboard uh, that she found, uh, like a gaming motherboard. Also, some of her other favorites that she she's seen at CES. And I want to get her opinion on the SAG after deal that was announced yesterday for providing uh, royalties from training AI models on voice actors. Mm -hmm. So the idea is there, there's one company that signed the deal and it says like you can use uh, a model for this long, you have to pay people this much and you can't use it forever and all that sort of thing. Uh, but a lot of the voice actors are not happy with the deal. So we'll talk to Trish about what she thinks of that. Mm -hmm. about. Yeah, that'll be fascinating. I always like being on with her. So I'm excited to be on today as well. Check it out. That's uh, 2.30, no, sorry, 2 p.m. Mountain Time. Right? <laughs> it's 1 p.m. Pacific, so Pacific. yes, 2 p.m. <laughs> My brain I had to think flat. about it, too. So yeah, yeah, I don't, don't know what that. happened there. Anyway, Tom, be safe. Have fun. Enjoy the beautiful places in Vegas so that uh, we can hear all about your awesomeness. We'll see you soon. Thanks, man. Bye now. See you, Tom. All right. Cool. Let's this back here. That is cool. He's getting the place all prepped for us for April, you know? Yeah. So we yeah. can go out there and all the seats and, will be warm. Yeah, right, exactly. He's going to he's going to seek out. He's going to go check out that uh that sphere. We got to do the sphere while we're out there. I want to uh, do the sphere. How does one time. get in there? What do you do to have you to get in? You buy a ticket there? and you see that Darren Aronofsky thing. How expensive is that? Do you know? Oh, I don't know. 50, 60 bucks would be my guess. I would do 50, 60. I'd yeah, do that. Yeah. You're watching a movie. You're seeing, you know. If they tell me it's 250, forget it. I'm oh, forget that. it. If it's even if it's over 100. I was looking at uh like T and I are thinking about going out Saturday and having one day for the two of us before Sunday when producers and stuff like that yeah. stuff happens. Right. And, uh, and I'm like, well, let's see, you know, what shows? Oh my gosh, Kylie Minogue is playing in Vegas. T and I are both love Kylie. We'd love to see her. Uh, not for 750 bucks a ticket no! though. Sorry, Jeez. not happening. Yeah. Holy shiz! I did I see something. Get my, for that for that amount of money, I better get my own Kylie. Yeah, I, that's <laughs> crazy. Uh, yeah. Rich, I forgot his last name. Anyway, guy I follow was out there in Vegas, got to go there and got to see the cameras they use to make content for that thing. Oh, it is yeah. a 18K. Yeah, 18K uh, by 18K. Really? So it's yeah. square. Uh, it is, what was it? 36 tera. No. Yeah, 36 terabytes of data on each cartridge. It was cr Jeez. It was some crazy stuff, man. I, I really want to go in there. I'd love to tour that place. Anyway, hey, let's do this right now. Well, what do you recommend? Yes, it's time for recommendals. Time for us to talk about things we've seen on streaming services and why we like them and why you should go watch them yourselves. Let's welcome to the program Nicole Spag. Hello, Nicole. Hello, friends. Hello, friend. Hello. Uh, also, Randy Jordan. Hello, Randy. Good morning, morning stream. Happy New Year. Oh, thanks. Oh, this yeah, is our it is first New Year, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's our first 2024 show. It's not February show. yet. <laughs> Not yet. You know how you know how I'd know if it was February or not because it would be a one month away from Dune, part two. <laughs> and I'm very excited about that. So you're gonna oh, see that in theaters. You're not gonna wait time. for uh, streaming on that. Oh one. hell no! I go day one yeah. on that thing, and probably the yeah. biggest theater I can I, find. Can't I love wait. how Scott keeps trying to jinx this thing. Yeah. Oh wait, are we, you gonna? We, you are, it, we are not going to talk about it until it comes out, it, unless you get delayed again. It'll. Well, that's true. Yeah, sure. I you don't want what? any more delays. That'd be nice. I haven't seen the first Dune. You just sit down and watch it. It's up on Netflix right now, I think. Someone has I'll it. I'll just wait till the other one comes out, and I'll watch them both at the same time. You, you would just read the Wikipedia article about it. That'll. Uh... You know, that's what I did last week uh, for uh, Saltburn. And yes, Scott, ew. Yeah, yeah that, ew. Confirms, that confirms why Nicole is not going to watch Saltburn. Yeah, Saltburn's gross. That's true. Yeah. It's, it's, but God, I'm yeah. hearing so many good things about it besides its grossness, though. It's like, oh. Yeah, but it needs the grossness to be noteworthy because otherwise yeah. it's not that yeah. The shockiness of it. Yeah. Just keep holding your horses, Ibit. We're going to get our Oscar noms, and then you and I will watch Salt Burn. Yeah, and you think it's going to be? Uh, it, it might follow, you know, what the Golden Globes did and have uh, Barry Keoghan get a, uh, uh, a nomination. But uh, we'll see if it makes it into the, we'll uh, into we'll the Big see. Ten. Yeah, I mean, he got one last year for Anna Sharon for supporting. He he could do uh -huh. it again for actor. So, and he's very good in it. Don't get me wrong; he is very, very good in it. Sure, but sure. that movie is effed. I liked it the first time when it was when I saw it the first time when it was called The Talented Mister Ripley. Yeah, except. <laughs> 
<laughs> so much, so much <laughs> more weird shit goes on in that movie. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yes, Max and uh, Netflix both have Dune Part One, so you should go watch that. You, Nicole. you have no excuse. Yeah, many get dunes. in there. there I have many all dunes the excuses. There. I, they're called Ava and Mateo. Yeah. And if you and if you start watching Dune now, you might be done by February when the sequel yeah. comes. That's out. right. It's nice yeah. and long, almost three hours. Um, all right, so let's get to these. Uh, we're going to sure. do a slightly different order today. We'll start with Brian, and we will end. Or, and after that, Randy's got a meeting, and then we'll go from there. Uh, cool. Brian, let's start with you. What do you got here? Yeah, I was going to do a show called The Crowded Room, and I'm saying I'm mentioning it because I probably won't uh, use it for a future recommendal because as we get further and further away from these things, um, I tend to forget all the reasons I loved it, but I still remember loving the crowded room, which is the Apple TV thing with Tom Holland and Amanda Seyfried, mm. um, or Seyfried. Uh, it's excellent and it's really worth checking out, but something I saw more recently just jumped right in front of this and, um, a little background. I get the, uh, the Hollywood reporter, uh, daily email. And that's how I found out about movies coming out and what things are, you know, Randy and I are, what things are rumored to be in the, uh, the best picture nomination category. And one of their articles recently was, uh, the best, the 50 best TV shows of the 21st century. Um, and so I said, Oh, well, this is good. Cause then this gives me a list of things that I can check out when, when I'm done watching crap like moonlighting or, or, or whatever. And, um, so I took the list, I, I took out all the things that I've already seen. And, um, and then you've got, you know, number eight girls haven't watched that yet. Bojack Horseman started watching that need to go back to it. We get down to number 19 and I see something that I've never even heard of among <laughs> all of these shows that I've heard of and, and thought, Oh man, these are all great shows that I do need to check out. Number 19 was something I'd never heard out from Sundance TV. And we're well, there's play- your reason. <laughs> yeah. Well, kind of. Uh, and we're going to hear a clip from it right now. All right, here you go. This my wife says I'm nosy. I like to think of myself more as, as curious. So if I happen to cross some kind of imaginary line with you, just let me know. Sure. So my buddies said you could have conjugal visits on death row. I told them it was all BS, more like an urban legend. There are no conjugal visits. I knew it. You couldn't even touch another person, right? No touching. That's got to work on your psyche. You weren't supposed to anyway. What do you mean you weren't supposed to? Things were a lot different when I was first incarcerated. Certain element of guards were less supervised. So it uh, created an environment for things to occur. Things? What, what, uh, what kind of things? Encounters, I guess. Oh, not by chance. More like an initiation of sorts. Initiation? Yeah. This sounds like, I think my wife saw this. Uh, this is a show called Rectify. She she may she well have see seen it. this. Yep. Yeah, it. this is. Um, uh, I can see why this was uh, on this list of of uh, great TV shows, and I can also see, thanks to Sundance TV, why I'd never heard of it before. Uh, four seasons, um, uh, all of different lengths. Ten. Let's see. Like season one is ten episodes. Season two is eight. Something like that. Anyway, there are thirty total episodes. I binged. I went through the whole thing while I was uh, sick and um, man, this is a great show. It focuses on the, the, the guy you heard there uh, was on death row, uh, a guy named Daniel Holden. And because of some DNA evidence that, um, that uh, came out, he was uh, released from prison after a release from death row after being in there for 20 years, nearly 20 years. And, this the the prosecutor one of the prosecutors still wants to get him back in there they think that the dna evidence was was falsified or crap um they uh uh his his mother is having a hard time adjusting to him being out his sister who is the one who who kind of pushed to get him out um uh is kind of his his 
cheerleader and and protector and kind of almost overshields him. And then you've got the guy you heard in that clip with him, uh, Clayton Crawford, who uh, went through some problems when he was uh, Riggs on the Lethal Weapon TV show. Oh, that's uh, why that guy's, guy's familiar. He got in big yeah, trouble for something. I he got in some that. big trouble, just being a problem on set. Yeah. But he's really, really good. Plays uh, Teddy Jr., uh, basically... Uh, uh, brother-in-law to Daniel Holden, and it's it's watching their the two of their evolutions throughout the TV show, their their uh, growth throughout the TV show that it makes this thing so good. It's got an incredible cast, like um, Abigail Spencer, who plays his sister. She was on that TV show, um, the time travel one. Shoot, uh, timeline. Hmm. It was the one where she had to go back in time and and fix things almost like a quantum leap but but she wouldn't leap into somebody's body they would just time travel back oh yeah um, i forgot the name of that my again yeah. another one my wife lo- was it timeless i think timeless 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 there yeah, we go that's, that's it. it yeah tina really liked that one too i watched the first season and said yeah this is pretty good yeah um but you also get jay smith cameron who um recently was nominated for her incredible work on the tv show succession she was uh, jerry um the foil to uh, Kieran Culkin's uh, character. Mm. Um, she is fantastic. She plays the mom, and um, and she's really good. This is uh, available on AMC Plus. It is uh, um, it is well paced, but it is a slower TV show. Think think Justified in its in its um, delivery. So a slower kind of country pace it's uh takes place outside of georgia mm. i'm sorry outside of atlanta georgia in a place called Polly, georgia mm. um doesn't get graphic with the stuff that uh that daniel was um put into in prison for but they do describe it so you know if that triggers you um it's something to be aware of um but it is uh god it was it's such a brilliant show and i'm i'm so happy that that I finally heard of this thing and was finally able to watch it. Yeah. Okay. And this is streaming right. where, did you say? Streaming on AMC Plus, but AMC. I think you can watch the first season on Amazon Prime, or you can, maybe it's, you, you can get a free trial of AMC Plus on Amazon Prime. And listen, if you are if you uh, have a plan, you can watch all 30 episodes easily in a week. I yeah. did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not long, so. And it, no. you feel, and it's a full concluding thing, you get your whole story. Oh, absolutely. You get, yeah. a, you get a conclusion to the story. They knew... They knew um, uh, just what they wanted to do with the story, and they they went from start to finish with it. I remember Kim raving about it, and I was like, oh, I should watch that. Why would you watch it without me? Yeah. And we had this whole conversation that I forgot entirely, so I'm glad for the reminder. Yeah. The main, the main guy, Aiden Young, is so good. I don't know if I've ever seen him in anything else, but he um, he just does such a great simmering his, his his delivery of certain lines like you know most people can do like an okay like mm-hmm. that and and mm-hmm. kind of leads things on he does that a lot in his character uh and it's not all like tell me more or i don't know why you're saying that kind of thing it's like uh he's been just released and he doesn't understand a lot of things so okay <laughs> okay <laughs> all right interesting i will about definitely to ask check it out. sorry Oh, I, I just want to offer a mini rant on that Hollywood reporter list because, oh, okay. and I understand listicles there. You, you sure. almost, you almost design them to be questioned and argued, right? Of course, like of course, this yeah. one just feels so designed and not oh, really? well thought out to me. And, and I, I want to, I want to explain why it has reservation dogs at number six, which I mean, great, but not mm-hmm. number six of the last 24 years. It has 30 for 30 at number 13. It has Peep Show at number 20. And it has Survivor at number 23. And I'm like, okay, you put those four shows above Veep at 32, Chernobyl at 35, <laughs> Band of Brothers at 38. How is that not in your top 10? Yeah, that should be top and, 10. And then my, my thing that I would always overrate, it has Parts Unknown at 43. That is such an awesome and important show. Mm-hmm. And it's at 43. I just can't, I don't know. That, that, that list just drives me crazy. Well, if you get, cra- oh, really? if you get oh. weird about the order, though, it's still helpful to have 50 in whatever order, yeah. right? Like, Because mm-hmm. I'm looking at some of these that, that I've never, I've never seen Southside. I've never watched. Um, I need to go back and re rewatch BoJack Horseman or re get into it. Um, 
uh, Peep Show, Broad City. I hear great things about it. I've never yeah, watched sure. an episode of Broad oh, City. Broad City. So great, if nothing dude. else, this is like a yeah. I, I mean, there's nothing that stopped me from watching it. But right. um, uh, Broad City is wonderful. Yeah. I love that show. Yeah, I, I, not, I, when you watch it, you're going to love that I'm not show. saying Peep Show doesn't deserve to be in the top 50, it, but it could be like 45 or something. That doesn't need to be at 20. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, sometimes when I see these lists, um, I look and see if Pace does this a lot, and it drives me crazy, where it's like, oh, here are the 50 best albums of 2023. And each album pick was written by a different person. Like you see, you know, the description of the album at the end, it says uh, submitted by so-and-so. And so it's not really a, a, a number one through a 50 list. It's a, here are 50 great albums that our editors recommend rather than, well, he said it was better than these other albums that this other person recommended. Yeah, yeah. Their, mis- their mistake than- they made is ranking them. They should have just given you, it said, here's a list in no just particular ended, order of the 50 the, best things. And, yeah. Yeah. That yeah. would have, that would have been better. I, um, but I, and I'll be the I'll be the one the one person I know, uh, especially out of the four of us, who'll argue that Survivor has gotten so much better over the last few years with its uh, its less focus on alliances and strategy of the the strategy of the social game and more on the uh, action. Absolutely, of the, uh, absolutely. You know, I I totally agree that if you're trying yeah. to get people to watch TV and great TV, you can yeah. put Survivor in your top 50. Just don't yeah. put it above Chernobyl. Put it above <laughs> Brandon Brothers or Chernobyl. Agreed. Yeah, yeah agreed. that's a weird place to put it. Uh, real quick here, Nicole, I noticed because I well, I know we're all fans of this, but in particular, Nicole's the one that introduced me to it. But um, How To with John Wilson's on this list. It makes me want to go oh, rewatch good. it all. Yeah. Yeah. I, I still don't know. need to finish the third season. Third season's amazing. I don't know if they're coming back or not. I don't know if I got if uh, there's a lot of stuff on the on the on the edge over there at HBO, so I don't know where that thing's at. But I hope it goes. I kind of love that he had almost an existential crisis with his celebrity mm, and yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. like that whole thing oh, kind of yeah. playing out in real time was weird to watch. It was weird, and the whole thing with the toilet thing they set up to look oh, like it was flooding but it wasn't yeah, and faking that yeah and that was great yeah i, I, I love that, that. It, yeah you yeah. got it it's in the it's in the show it's in season three it's in the, okay. yeah it's in all right it's, it's it's in the third that episode yeah. yeah it's worth seeing it's very good because he's speaking like of, yeah. such an outsider yeah sorry <laughs> speaking of things that are coming back i hope that a week from today i am sitting here recommending the new true detective i'm about to dive in oh yeah Ooh, same, i'm hoping i'm big, so hopeful big, big same dude i'm very excited about that one a lot of buzz on that. that that new season um i think it's because it's in the snow and it has a fargo vibe that's my personal opinion anyway hey moving on uh randy let's uh do yours so we can get you to your meeting uh yeah, let's, any setup let's here? talk about one of the best series of 2023 deserves the accolades it's getting deserves more accolades than it's been getting and uh, you're going to hear um, uh, in the 1950s, a chemist is dealing with life and love and loss. And uh, the fact that the genius chemist is a woman makes it all the more difficult, a thousand times more difficult on her to navigate this strange place she finds herself, which is los angeles california uh it, it uh, you're about to hear her uh hosting a tv show all right here you go welcome viewers my name is elizabeth zott and this is supper at six <laughs> see this presto soups cook so quick it's done in a presto it's my line it is a real time saver and that's because it's full of chemicals and not the good kind There will be a surprise indeed. Feed enough of it to your loved ones and they'll die off, saving you tons of time because you won't have to feed them anymore. (laughs) Today, we will be making a fan favorite, lasagna, but we will be testing a new variable. Caring for loved ones takes work, real work. Anyone who tells you differently does not cook dinner for a family of five every night. So let's make something hearty. Let's make something delicious. Let's make something that keeps our family alive and gives us leftovers for a week. Let's get started, shall we? I want to see this movie. Mm -hmm. You you have to watch this series. Our series. I keep thinking it's a movie. I don't know why. Yeah, it's because it's Brie Larson, and I don't think of her as a television actress. But yeah, yeah. Oh, that's all I think of her. She was amazing in the United States of Terra. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. She was good in that. That was easy. That was like her first role. It was easy to forget yeah. about almost everybody else in those 
in that show because what's her name was so dominant, but but yeah. <laughs> See, I'd never I'd never heard of her until the room and was just blown away by that. And so yeah. that's that's when I became a fan. She's great. She has a she has a three episode arc in community, by the way. So, right. yes, so this this is lessons in chemistry. And uh I think you guys talked about the book at some point. Um the book uh came out a year and a half ago that yeah. it's based on. It is uh, different than the book. It's the book is a dog book, and the TV series only has one dog episode. <laughs> it is, <laughs> it is much, much more. The, the the TV series is much, much more about all of the characters and what they're going through. And uh, Brie Larson has to carry this thing with grit and determination, and boy, mm-hmm. she does. Mm-hmm. It is, it is a 1950s TV show. You're gonna you're gonna start watching it and go, oh, I'm getting Mad Men vibes. Yes, mm-hmm. that is uh, it is on purpose. It is very very carefully set in its time periods. When you go from you go from 1950, I think, to 57, it jumps back to 20. Uh, sorry, 33 at some point. And every time every time you're in a specific year, everything is very specified to that year. You're seeing that uh, that time and hearing it and so forth and uh it's a it's a it's a feminist series uh but it's also just it's got a huge heart it's so beautiful the music is awesome in this series is she uh like a scientist she is a chemist she is she she has a master's degree and as the series starts she is working as a chemist in a lab that where she is the only woman who is not a secretary Mm -hmm. and uh there's tons and tons of men all around who are just mistreating her basically and she meets one of them and they fall in love and uh it's uh it's just um it's a it's a it's a harsh show i i gotta put that out there over and over there are a couple of episodes that are absolutely r-rated um, I, I watched this with my 14 year old and had some regrets at times. Um, but, uh, it's also just, it's so wonderful and I'm, I'm glad he watched it with me because I, it gave us a lot to talk about in terms of, uh, you know, first wave fem- feminism and what things were like, but there's a whole subplot here where the, uh, the black neighbors across the street are going through their political, uh, difficulties and it's, um, it's just, it's so deftly handled just beautiful show i want to see it um the real woman uh, elizabeth zott uh mm-hmm. also a really fascinating person obviously and we made a tv show about her but um i look at her she looks amazing and it tells me that she knew the right chemistry for the food to eat because look at her dude she's <laughs> what a beautiful lady in her later years like i need to eat better good gosh yeah. uh that sounds great i will definitely put it's- that on the list looks awesome yeah, second it or third it or however many people are because uh yeah red fraggle recommended this uh the book last month and and tina watched the series right after that and just loved it um it's fantastic awesome uh, it's, uh I, i'm curious brian um yeah. did you feel like it is not getting as ma- like did i felt like it didn't get as many nominations for golden globes as it deserved for instance, did oh, you, yeah, did you have the same sure. feeling? Definitely got shafted. Um, did Brie, did she get a, she got a nom for, yes. yeah, cause she was there. I remember seeing her jokingly disappointed. Like she made this angry face and then laughed at like when they did all the, the shots of all the people, uh, when the winner got announced, but that was the only nom, right? Was just her. Uh, no, the show was nominated in was its it category. Her? Oh, was it? Okay. Um, yeah, no, it should have, it should have gotten a lot more, um, it's ridiculously named yeah. category. Yeah, well, yeah. Golden Globes needs to have a new category. Uh, women in Chemistry. Best film, TV show <laughs> with women in chemistry, making food. Um, Where is this playing and, again? Apple TV Plus. Apple TV Plus. Yes. Just another another home run for Apple TV. Yeah. How do yeah. they do this? I don't know. Well, they have all the money yeah. in the world, and they can just buy all the best people and make all the best scripts. And I think so that's true. part of it. But they don't seem to have any losers. You know, There's no bummers know, over there. I know. Yeah, it's, uh, it's crazy. It's That's good, good though. That's a very Apple thing to do is not want to screw that up. So I guess I'm glad. But also, you know, maybe they're hard to work for. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> maybe. Maybe. You never know. I could just make this up. <laughs> hey, Randy, if you uh, need to leave or whenever you do, do. But hang around as long as you want. Whatever you want to do. Right on, right on. And I just want to say again, the book is really a dog book and the series is not. But 
there is a dog in this series that I fell in love with the instant I saw it. It is so amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like if you like dog stuff, <laughs> I don't know. How to, it is like just, there's just, ah, it's magical. It's absolutely magical. Oh, oh. And it has a uh, Mark Evan Jackson, um, uh, Captain Raymond Holt's husband from Brooklyn nine, nine. Oh, <laughs> he's, yeah. he's a doctor right. in this. Uh, yes. He's amazing. Um, I'm trying to remember the uh, 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 Rain Wilson plays one of the bad guys. Oh God! And yeah, he's such a good bad guy. Oh. It's just, just like there's every reason to watch this this series. Please do. I like Mark Evan Jackson a lot. That guy's great. Uh, excellent. <laughs> uh, well, thank you for bringing that to our attention. Again, that's Apple TV Plus, and uh, the show is called Lessons in Chemistry. All right. Yeah. Nicole, let's fly, mm -hmm. fly over to your place, and you tell us yes. what the clip's about. Well, I wanted to recommend something, but it's not streaming. I actually bought it, and it's something I've been, wanted to watch for a really long time, and I'm kind of disappointed. It's not streaming anywhere. I don't even know if it has streamed yet. Mm. But if you have not watched Ghostbusters Afterlife, mm -hmm. I highly recommend, yeah. especially if you have the nostalgia feelings for the original Ghostbusters movie. Uh, agreed, um, especially with another the next one coming out soon. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's a good time to watch that. So, and it'll it'll help you forget about Ghostbusters 2. Mm -hmm. it, forget Ghostbusters 2. Yeah. Though the video game, amazing, the Ghostbuster video game, honestly, that was like oh, Ghostbusters really? 3 for me. Um, <laughs> I, play, I apparently need to play that. Oh, Scott, wonderful. Scott's a little. Yeah, not, not it's not, the, sure it's not my favorite, I but I, some people love that game, and I don't. I don't. It just made them. me feel like I was. I was doing. I was watching Ghostbusters three. Yeah. Um, nice. It, oh, wow, it gave okay. me those good right. Ghostbuster feels. Yeah. But the only reason why I remembered that I had bought this movie was because I saw a spoiler picture on Facebook and I was like, I gotta watch it, I gotta watch it right now, I have to watch it right now. So in that case, the spoiler was actually really good for me because it it got me back to remembering that movie was there and I needed to watch it. So you can't stream it, um, you have to either rent it or buy it. I bought it through Amazon Prime, it's well worth it, I love it, highly recommend it if you haven't had a chance to, to see it yet. All right, very um, cool. Have you talked about the the change Am Prime Video Amazon Prime Video is doing yes. with the commercial the stuff ads, or yeah. whatever? I was yeah. just looking at the email and it was like for an additional two ninety nine per right. month, you for can get months. ad free. I'm like, wait, you can keep I having what you have. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. they they've framed it in a way that's they've decided it's better than saying it's a general price hike. Yeah, Instead, they're saying, well, the for just another two, you know, just for another Ponderosa meal in the 80s, um, <laughs> you can <laughs> you can come over here and watch this with no ads like you already That's have right. been. And I don't know. It annoyed the hell out of me when I saw it. But yeah. yeah. And I just I just so, want to ask, how do we not have more of the new Ghostbusters movies? They should have been cranking these out the last six years. I think pandemic i think yeah um, the strikes screwed him up i think you might have seen more or sooner i think the newer one would have been out by now uh had we not had all that but mm -hmm. it's probably i loved it bit. seriously yeah. afterlife when is the, the the next one coming out because uh, you can't say year, two it's like it's the afterlife two or what? Um, no, sometime it's, this this year i believe it's called uh, ghostbusters yeah. frozen empire and it's this year and it comes out frozen in empire. let's frozen see empire. no date yet though just oh, as coming soon. So. so there you go. Sometimes. Maybe they'll put it on streaming to kind of get people. Because, you know, you want to get people ready. Right, right. To go see the, the one yeah, in the theater. So put it out. Life is not streaming. Huh. Yeah. 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 So uh, instead, uh, I'm recommending a movie that I saw in the theaters. Uh, I think it's on Amazon Prime, but I watched it on HBO Max. Um, Ava and Mateo and I have watched this multiple times. Absolutely love it. The clip I'm sharing, I kind of a disappointed how it was treated at the Golden Globes, but oh God, that's yes. yeah. Yeah, so. a little tone deaf <laughs> from uh, Joe Coy for that joke. Yeah, yeah he's an idiot, but yeah. he admitted he didn't watch any of the movies, <laughs> <laughs> or or write any of the bad jokes. He also admitted yeah, yeah, yeah. he didn't write any of the bad jokes. All of that just tells me they've had a hard time hiring people for that job. That's they all it did. tells me. Yeah, yeah. and ten yeah, days yeah, is yeah. not enough time to prepare for uh, the Golden Globes in his defense. No, I so. I don't blame him. I sent Scott a clip. Yep. It's a very funny clip. It's a pretty funny <laughs> clip. Here it comes. Oh, by the way, Max only unless the, the reason you're thinking of Prime, Prime's got their whole deal now where they have Max content. If you 
added on. It's an add-on channel for Prime, but it's still just Max. Um, I think it was there on Prime at first. Oh, was it? And okay. I think it moved off. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, here we go. Here's your clip. Anyway. Oh, looks like this beach was a little too much beach for you, Ken. If I wasn't severely injured, I would beat you off right now, Ken. I'll beat you off with you any day, Ken. Hold my ice cream, Ken. All right, Ken, you're on. Let's beach off. Anyone who wants to beach him off has to beach me off first. I will beach both of you off at the same time. But you don't even know how to beach yourself off. How are you going to beach oh, both of us off? It doesn't make sense. Can? You can, can you beat, beat yourself off? You're going to beach Come both on, of us off? Beach. Nobody's going to beach anyone off. It's the scene my, my mother-in-law would walk out on if she saw Barbie. She'd leave. Right? Yeah. It's, and, it's, and it's almost the scene that doesn't belong in the movie. Or it's a joke that doesn't belong in the movie. Yeah. yeah. It, it's, no, and that's the, I think that's it's the point of it, though, right? Yeah. yeah, the I point of the, the point of it is to just, have everybody just be to show how unaware. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So you They're loved, so innocently you, stupid. Yeah, the right. the Kens the Kens are amazing. What did so do you like the movie then a lot? Eh. I absolutely adored the movie. Mm. I love that they addressed everything that I thought my preconceived notion of the movie. I love just how they played with the history of Barbie. I mm. I grew up with Barbie. Barbie, that was my toy. Mm -hmm. I would trade my brother. Um, he would want to play with my Barbies, and I wanted to play with his He-Man. So we would trade. <laughs> it's still, Barbie was... Um, but, and, and Ava loves Barbie, too. Um, it, I don't know. It just... Barbie is classic to me. But as the movie addresses, you know there's preconceived notions of Barbie and how it's affected girls. And it, I guess for, for some, it's not a good, I mean, they address stereotypical Barbie in the movie, but then Barbie is so much more than just stereotypical Barbie. I have um, two Barbies that I've held on to in, in the box. Uh, software developer Barbie and game developer Barbie. <laughs> I love it. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, um, sorry. Are you still there? Yeah, you yeah, just we're, your we're mic changed. Oh, your mic changed oh, my for mic, some reason. Yeah, my mic changed. Yeah. So um, you're back to normal now. So I, I'm back to normal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was a Discord Barbie there for a minute. Mm. Um, but yeah, I just I I love the movie. I love the pacing of the movie. I love the storytelling of the movie, the history. Uh, I love the just the adult jokes that went way over the head of my kids. Um, mm. You know, of course the uh, the the big scene that America is it. What's her name? America. America Ferrera. Ferrera. Mm -hmm. Ferrera. Um, yeah. Ferrera does is. It's true. It's all true. And that's what's moving about it. Like it, it, when you, when you are a woman walking through life, it, depending on your race and your era and your background, it's all different. And I, and I like the fact that Barbie has tried to grow with that yeah. um, and to give women more than just a Barbie doll or uh, a baby doll. And that's what they, the whole big scene in the beginning is like, mm -hmm. the, you know, girls only had baby dolls to care for something else. Mm -hmm. Whereas Barbie came in and said, no, you can be anything that you want and an astronaut. And then they, they play with all of those things. So I cried, of course, because I, that's what I do. <laughs> but it's, it's, that's my and job. That. Yeah. Well, and I think I think anybody with a heart is going to cry at some point yeah. in this movie. There's yeah. a lot of like yeah. serious. That Billy Eilish song is oh. used oh, so God. just like like a knife to the heart. That's, that's so the good. music is wonderful. Yeah, that yeah. song yeah. superseded uh, the one that used to get me was the one in Toy Story Two by ah, what's her name. When somebody loves you, do, 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 do. I can't think of who sings it. Anyway, oh, that I song know, used I, to I, choke I me up head, so right. bad. Used to choke me yeah. up so bad. This is that level or more. And yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I'm not even like a, I'm not like a mega fan of Billie Eilish, but I think that song is so good. That is an yeah. amazing mm -hmm. song that just reaches she right in your guts. performed it on SNL. It was beautiful. Yeah, she's very good. I gotta uh, go. Yeah. I just want to say, Barbie is the most self-aware movie that's ever been made. Yeah, and that's the that's the point. Like uh, mm -hmm. Greta Gerwig sets out to make the most self aware mm -hmm. movie that's ever been made, and for me, it really hits its its peak when 
uh, it refers to itself as a movie where uh, you have Barbie say, I'm not stereotypical Barbie pretty. And then Helen Mirren, the original Barbie, by the way, <laughs> look at pictures of Helen Mirren from 50 years yeah. ago. Yeah. Helen Mirren says, note to the filmmakers, Margot Robbie is the wrong person to cast if you want to make this point. It's just yeah. uh, that was what, a, line. what a yeah. moment. Yeah it, yeah, it really shouldn't be possible, but that movie's awesome. It's really See ya. good. And See ya. Bye, See Randy. Randy. And, yeah, I, and I really encourage you, um, if you haven't seen the movie, especially if you're a male, watch it. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, it. I like the Ken storyline because Ken is nothing without Barbie, mm -hmm. and that's and he he doesn't like that so much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I love all the 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 storylines and that they do with ken and the patriarch <laughs> he's like there was one scene where he's like a woman asked me the time and it was a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it was really a good. wonderful it's just a wonderful movie and i encourage you to watch it with your kids too because there will be good questions that come up and it's it's great it's yep. great it's very very so. good mm -hmm. So um, there you go, Barbie Max. Excellent, watch it. excellent choice. I'm oh, gonna... and you can watch the uh, on Max after you watch the Barbie. You can watch the making of the Barbie house. <laughs> in um, we watched a little bit of it where they took a house in I think it was Malibu, California, and they turned it. You know, they had that big pink house. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They filmed that whole thing for a reality show, of course. Of course. Um, where they built they built the whole house. Yeah. So, and that's, that's a fun little watch too. Yeah. Huh. Also, I don't think, so co-written, this movie was co-written by Noah Baumbach. He does not get enough credit uh, for his writing talent. And uh, I just think he should get something cool. Him and Greta Gerwig worked really close together on this. And I think that says something about a guy who has to hang around Wes Anderson most of his life, that he gets mm. to write really cool shit. So big credit mm. to him too. Uh, all right. I'm going to tell you about a documentary because today it was all dramas and, you know, serious stuff sort of barbie's not but uh it's you know let me give you something that's a little bit more how about some information about our past sure how about something real yeah how about something from our past here's a here's a here's an idea with my clip i feel like it could be the beginning of the end of the world i feel like our days could be numbered i feel like nuclear bombs could go off nuclear plants could melt down we could suffer famine and i don't want to go through this alone why 2k how can we prepare individually? How can we work together? And how can we, humankind, utilize Y2K as an opportunity to look at ourselves, to analyze where we've been, and to adjust our sights for the future? Now, as much as it may sound like mm. this documentary is narrated, it's not. It's just right. clips from back well, then. Well, definitely not narrated by somebody who passed away several years ago. Yeah, no, <laughs> definitely not. Um, so it's all clips from back in 99 or so. And... Uh, I was working at a company where I was in charge of making sure that we had all Y2K readiness possible. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't a huge deal, but the stuff we did required it. I got put in charge of it, and I hated that job because so much of it was unknown, and you couldn't really control a lot of it. And there was a lot of hype around it, too. I worked yeah. for a computer company. Thankfully, the, the, date, the way the date worked in our company it was a numerical. So day one started in like, I don't know, January 1st, 1970, whatever. Yeah. And it just went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Mm -hmm. So we didn't actually store the actual date. It was a numeric that was then converted to the date. Right. So we didn't have any problems. Part of, part of the was problem was, big is, deal. yeah, part of the problem was everybody had something different, or at least it was thought that because they were so different, that this was going to be a giant nightmare. And it turns out, and what I liked about this documentary, which, by the way, the name is before before we get emails from oh, yeah. uh, shitoutofluck.com, <laughs> is Time Bomb. Uh, sorry, Time Bomb Y2K. Uh, I saw this on HBO Max. This is a Max original documentary. Uh, it is it is told just through clips of stuff happening at the at the time, uh, interviews. Um, you know, people who claim the world was going to end, scientists, uh, computer scientists, all this stuff, and you're just sort of watching sort of the historic thing play out. And uh, as it turns out, we were way, it was way overhyped. Uh, the, the actual threat was not nearly what we thought it was going to be. 
part of that is due to preparations, but it turns out a lot of those preparations were easy and done very early. And all the freak out toward the end was mostly just freak out. And it's kind of hard to see that while we were going through it, but this documentary does a good job of showing some people who are kind of grifters about it. There's this one dude that drove me absolutely (laughs) crazy who was charging 8,000 bucks for a speaking engagement, uh, was selling all this swag, doing all this like total grifty work. And he would just say, no, this is all part of the, I am here to save humanity. I'm going, you know, he was preying on people's fears (laughs) and he turned out to be full of it. And in the end, when they even asked him about it, he's like, well, I believe this just shows that I did my job right. I got the information out there and people, you know, like taking credit for it. Uh Total horseshit, right? But you don't know it at the time. And so a documentary looking back 24 or five years is a great way to see that time again through a different lens. And I really enjoyed it. Um, Some people have complained that, that it's, literally a documentary of a bunch of slapped together clips that isn't really structured. Um, I would disagree. I I don't need a narrator for every documentary. I've seen plenty of good ones where they don't. And this one is one of those. And it just kind of is a, the the way it's structured is a timeline. It's like, well, here's when we first started talking about it in the late eighties or early eighties. Here's a guy who brought it up to IBM back in the uh, seventies and was told, oh, don't worry about it. It's like 30 years away. Who cares? It's not going to matter. Um, and then you go all the way kind of through this timeline and major moments in it and all that. And then they get to New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. Nothing major happens. They talk about all the risks that could have happened but didn't. It's just interesting. So if you like that kind of thing, you like uh, history of tech, this is a great time uh, to go check did, it out. Did they talk about um, people filling up their bathtubs? Uh, there's, water. there was a mention or two of that. There was a yeah. guy really? who, that I don't remember. What was the, uh, there, so a lot of people filled up their bathtubs and there was some kind of water shortage oh, or thinking something. That the, thinking that like the, uh, the water pumps would stop working at yeah, midnight. Yeah. So, well, the reason they did it is there was a case up, they were doing a Y2K test in some city. I forgot where it's maybe, I can't remember. And they did this test in the water system screwed up during the test and started gushing raw sewage out into some fields. And everybody took that as a sign that if we don't fill our tubs with water and load up on water, that that will happen in every city. And it turns out it was very localized and had nothing to do, had less to do with Y2K and more to do with how they administered the test. But people panicked. And as panic people do, they buy too much toilet paper in 2020. And back then they fill their tubs full of water. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Every every disaster or every impending doom is going to have its people who take advantage of the situation, the grifters, like you say, Mm -hmm. and the people who buy every resource they can that they think they're going to need. Yeah. They have some really annoying like political footage of like Clinton and Gore uh, trying Mm -hmm. to act like they got a handle on any of it. They don't know. They didn't know shit about what they were doing. (laughs) So they were going to schools and doing uh, some kind of internet connectivity thing to show that we're how prepared we were, and it all. And one of them just totally failed right in right in national TV. And I don't remember any of that. I never saw any of that stuff live. So that was interesting. Uh, so anyway, yeah, it's it's uh, a yeah. it's a good watch. I recommend it. Time bomb Y two K is the is the documentary, and it's on Max. Excellent. We had a lot of Captain Kipper today. said what I was thinking. The COBOL program, programmers did make a ton of money. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Cobol, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. If you went in there, if you were a COBOL <laughs> programmer at that time, they got into that a little bit too. People yeah. that were experts and stuff that everyone thought was dead yeah. uh-huh. were like suddenly in huge demand and had to like come in there and do stuff. And a lot of times they didn't do anything. They got hired for yeah. millions to go work for a corporation. And it turns out they did piddly poop and walked out with a ton of money. Like, it's a funny yeah. it's a funny thing we do to each other when we're panicking. Anyway, check it out on Max. That'll all be up on quicktms.li along with all the other stuff that we talked about today. Nicole, it's always nice to talk to you. Hope you're having always a great nice week. Always nice to talk to both of you. Yeah. You too. Good yeah. talking to you, Nicole. And we'll, uh, we'll do it next week. How about that? That'll be fun. Hey, that sounds good. I'll try to figure out a movie again. Yeah, <laughs> us too. <laughs> figure something else out that's not streaming. <laughs> get sick for <laughs> get sick for eight days and watch uh, binge something cool like Rant. Uh, there you go. Yeah, well, I have a list for I'll you. pass. Yeah, I you don't want to get sick. All right. No, no, no. I, I no. support you. Poor, in this poor Nicole has been has had sicknesses that have lasted longer yeah. than eight days. Yeah, <laughs> I think I think you deserve a break today. I'll see you yes, soon. Yes, for sure. 
All right, Brian, that's it for today's show. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay. I'm trying to remember how long it took us to change our SuperCard stack to support uh, the year 2000 when I worked at the software company. Oh, yeah, you would have been going through all that right then, right? Yeah, yeah, it was all, it was working at the software company. It basically took three minutes, I think, to change yeah. the codes. Like, okay, we're done. All right, good. It wasn't really, that's the thing of this documentary, too. They just, there was so much hype around it, and so much of yeah. it was just bunk and. People had genuine fears. I don't, you know, I don't want to discount people's fears sure, because they were being sure. told what they were being told. But man, I'm glad the internet wasn't what it was today. If you had freaking social right. media oh, back God. then, we'd oh. have had a whole bunch of Facebook pre- uh, programming experts, yeah, uh, is, is telling us what uh... they would have all shifted from being communicable disease experts to Y two K experts. Right. Anyway, uh, one final thing about commute sure. times. We talked about commuters yesterday. Yeah, some stats. We got something from. Uh, who is this from? Musical Chemist sent this in. Oh, yeah. It's a cool. text that says, hi, stop and break. I like that. It's, and it's yeah, on theme. Good. Yeah, it's very good. I was listening to your TMS commute discussion on my commute. I have about 30-minute commute from Amish country, Pennsylvania to Newark, Delaware. I didn't know there was another Newark in the uh, I didn't either. In yeah. the country. Why would you? Boy, what a name. You, it's like uh, naming your ship the Titanic. Why would you want to hitch your wagon to that moniker? I guess so. I don't know. I know I know no one from Newark, so maybe that place is awesome now. It just always no, gets screwed not. in it's TV not. and stuff. Yeah, no. It's, it's, it's always a mob thing, right? Newark? Uh, the airport's a, just, a, just a very industrial air, uh, area that uh, not representative of the great state, the garden state of New Jersey. All right. Balls in your court, New Jerseyans. Send us yeah, your prove, rebuttals. Prove me wrong. <laughs> anyway, it says 20 minutes of that is in Maryland. So my commute spans three states. Got to love the East Coast geography. Wow. Love the show, though. Yeah, that's crazy to think you go through three states every day just to commute. And some of that is Amish. That's awesome. That's yeah. great. Yeah, right. That's so, so cool. You have to honk behind a, uh, a pulled wagon sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, time for milking. Anyway. That's right. Hey, why is he drinking a Mountain Dew? <laughs> think, uh, uh, think. Uh, oh, by the way, if you want to be like musical chemist, you want to send in your thoughts. You're like, man, yeah. I love Newark, New Jersey. You guys are crazy. That's fine. Send them in, 801-471-0462, and let us know what you think about anything. All right? Brian, we got to get out of here. Do you have a song? I have a song. Holy cow. It's already after 11. My gosh, that's crazy. Luke, in, uh, also in Pennsylvania. I don't know if he's an Amish country, uh, says, Hey, Scooter and Beaker, for the umpteenth time, I'm requesting a cover for my birthday, but with a twist. My girlfriend's 40th birthday is three days before mine, so this request is for both of us. Oh, you know what? You're getting this one. Happy birthday. Oh, well, 40. You know, I don't know. We did a 47-year-old. You you, you said they were young uh, a couple days ago. That's true. I'll give you both. Let's party. But with a touch of diarrhea. There you go. Nicely yeah, done. Wow, oh, very yep. good. Uh, can I get the Darius Rucker chicken sandwich jingle? I didn't see uh, that they'd requested that as well. I think I have that right here. The tender crisp bacon cheddar ranch. There you go. I haven't heard Classic. that in a while. Yeah. Not in a long time. Uh, Luke says, I always request a cover of a Queen song, and I'm leaving it to the master to choose. Thank you both for the things you do and to the best, most caring community, the Tadpool. Love the show, though. Signed, Luke, a.k.a. A. Whatnot. Nice. Yeah, we love you. Happy Luke. birthday, guys. Um, let's get to this. Uh, uh, this is uh, a Queen cover that came out last year. Great album that was released by the Zach Brown Band, a collection of um, covers that they've done in concert. And uh, one of the ones they do in concert, they take on the challenge that is known as Bohemian Rhapsody. Here is the Zach Brown Band. Get more at frogpants.com. Oh, uh, uh, um, uh, um, ow! Yeah, that's <laughs> that's your typical tadpooly feud right Cat there. Cat tries to remember something. Yes, yep. I love it. 